It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott's here. Mary Jo Foley's here. And thank goodness, because it's been a crazy week. They've been keeping up on all of the stories about Windows 11 hardware requirements, Windows on ARM. Can you upgrade it? We're going to answer all your questions and a whole lot more. The deets on Windows 11 coming up next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 731. Recorded Wednesday, June 30th, 2021. Gravity of Chill. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Endava. Subscribe and listen to Tech Reimagined, the podcast from Endava, from wherever you get your podcasts. And by Podium. Today's customers expect on-demand everything, even from local businesses. Stay ahead of the competition with Podium. They have free plans for growing businesses, plus all the power growing businesses need to scale. Get started free today at podium.com slash www. And by AT&T Active Armor. We rely so much on our phones these days and are always on them, whether it's live streaming content, catching up with family on weekly video calls, or watching your favorite podcast. There's no room for fraud calls. Thankfully, AT&T makes customer security a priority, helping block those pesky calls. It's not complicated. AT&T Active Armor, 24-7 proactive network security and fraud call blocking to help stop threats at no extra charge. Compatible device and service required. Visit att.com slash activearmor for details. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Microsoft. I think there might be something to talk about today. Maybe. Maybe. Mary Jo Foley's here, all about Microsoft.com from ZDNet. Paul Therott from Therott.com. Just renewed my premium membership because the premium articles are so very good. Uh, and together they are the dynamic duo of Microsoft <laughs> Reportage. <laughs> The yeah. Batman and Robin, if you will. Thank you for classing it up with that Frenchy <laughs> reportage. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think I don't think there's even an English word reportage. No, that right. sounds like well, uh, Microsoft you, will make it up. You carried your canoes across the river <laughs> twice. Is we uh, took your reportage and uh, we had some learnings. <laughs> there, you know, even Steve Gibson yesterday was mocking learnings. He said, "This says learnings here." I said, "Yeah, that's a Microsoft." I know they word. they use it like learnings. it's a word. Learnings. <laughs> We're learning. And this was in regard to the <sighs> upgrade yeah. Snafu. Yeah. You know, I thought when when I saw the leaked Windows 11 that the biggest foo would be, oh, my God, they've centered the start menu. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, oh people. So I, have a, I, have, I have another one deep, deeper in the show that I thought was going to be the big controversy. But, you know, credit to Microsoft for yeah. coming up with something even more <laughs> they, terrible. They managed, I know. They managed oh. to, to change the story. So uh, what's what's uh, what's the latest? I mean, I've never seen such well, outrage, and it's funny because if had this not happened, people would be saying outrage that they had to get Windows 11. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's a good point. I mean, and by the way, I think Mary Jo would agree. The the past it is what it's been six days, four days. Yeah. It feels it feels like oh. six months, a oh. century. You know? It does. This has been the longest, hardest. I, it's like, like Napoleon's I said, Russian I, campaign. Yeah, I, I, I get know. that. I don't work in a mine. I'm not trying. You know, but it, it has been really busy. It's been busy. Yeah, yeah it has. Partly because you know, the, 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 the requirements seem to be a moving target, right? They are. The requirements you, so, seem to be, nobody has any idea what they are. Yeah. I know. So let me tell the backstory on the requirements, just so you know what we thought the day we did Windows <laughs> Weekly last yep. week on, 11, on, the, on the Thursday. Yeah, no, I think right? it's important when, to go back to the beginning, actually. Right. So Microsoft gave us this list of requirements for Windows 11. And what they said was a modern dual-core 64-bit CPU. They never really gave inclusive. us a cutoff. I know. They never gave us a cutoff. <laughs> like no, nope. none of us thought. Like so, you you you're not just actually meaning, like the past if you don't couple mind, years. Let yeah. me just add a, a little bit to that because yeah. we comp I had made the point uh, I think on that day that if you looked back, uh, Windows seven, eight, and ten each yeah. reduced the system requirements compared to its predecessor. 
which is pro probably yeah. speaks to the componentization and and also the, maybe an acknowledgement on Microsoft's part that people aren't just look are not going to buy new PCs. I mean, they want to yeah. upgrade their existing computers. And um, right. the old requirements. It's really it's funny to think back on this. Literally six days ago, uh, <laughs> a one gigahertz PC, a two core, uh, no, a single core. Uh, one gigahertz PC, two gigs of RAM for a 32 bit system, which will not be supported on Windows 11. And I think it was actually probably as little as 16, but let's, let's say, you know, 32 realistically uh, gigabytes of storage. Right. And, and that was, that was our understanding of the picture mm -hmm. six days ago. Right. It was. Right. And then the <laughs> next, and then the next six months happened. I know. I, I, I really, I, I, we always say Microsoft's terrible at communicating, but this could go in a Harvard business case study about the most yep. terrible way you could have done yep. this. Yep. <laughs> it's, you know because what? It's, it's actually, it's worse than that. There, there's a pathological quality to this. And I, I tweeted something to the effect of, it, you know, pause to consider the psychology of a company full of smart people that sat I together know. in a room and said, listen, <sighs> we're going to have really stringent hardware requirements for this thing. It's going to make yeah. people really mad. Yeah. Let's do it anyway, right? Yeah, let's know, do it. Right. And yeah. and and as we go out and do it, let's not tell people that we're doing it. You know, I mean, yeah. it, really incredible that they went out no, the gate, know, but they had to know. They had to know. Here's here's what they could have done that would have made this so... Well, there's many things they could have done, but <laughs> one is make this about security from the start, right? Like say, okay, we know these are tougher rules around TPM and around the processor. And here is why. Look at all these Spectre and Meltdown and hacking and ransomware and this and that. Here's yeah. our diagram of how we think by changing these requirements, we will make you safer. If they had come at it like that, they would have lessened the outcry by a lot, not completely. Joe, that's, that's silly <laughs> because that, you just described clear communication and they're incapable. Of I that. know, I know. You know, I, I yeah. I'm just, I was frustrated because they didn't even post the security blog post till day two. I don't know why. Like, did they think that would give it more impact on the day after the launch? That should have been the one they came out of the gate with, right? Like saying, okay, the requirements are more stringent and here is exactly why. No, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing is incredible. It, it's so it's weird how this unfolded because in the beginning, um, because the CPU th things seemed reasonable, and Microsoft posted these support pages that said everything back to a fifth gen would be fine on yeah. Intel, and then equivalent on AMD, and then everything on uh, Qualcomm because that thing's only been around yeah. for a little while. And it seemed like a Saturday morning, I wrote an article about the outrage over TPM 2.0 <laughs> that requirement, and because at the yeah. time. That seemed like it was the big sticking point. It oh did. man, <laughs> was I wrong about that? <laughs> because as I it know. turns out, the real line in the sand that Microsoft drew for Windows 11 was an eighth gen Intel CPU or equivalent on the AMD side. Now, just to put this in perspective for people, uh, and I've gotten this wrong a few times, I wanna make sure I get this right. Sixth gen was the, the chipset that caused the Surface Gate problem with when they had uh, all those huge problems. I think sixth gen was when Spectre and Meltdown happened, but you know, uh, obviously, they, subsequent generations of chips. Whenever that started, they've been trying to mitigate the effects of uh, of those problems. Mm -hmm. Eighth gen. The interesting thing about eighth gen is that this is when uh, Intel, for free, basically moved from dual core to quad core in their mainstream chips. And you know, one of the the, the kind of common buying advice things you hear uh, over the past couple of years is make sure you get an eighth gen and newer because it's just, you just get for free. It doesn't hurt battery life. It's better performance. It's just kind of better across the board. It's interesting that they chose eighth gen because I got to tell you, I, I have spent much of the past couple of weeks um, resuscitating PCs, bringing them up to date, which I only did just to see how that would work. And I have some interesting information about how windows 10 works in that regard that who cares anymore, right? It's over. But um, the vast majority of computers I had in my house until fairly recently were seventh gen chips, the very ones that are not able to make the leap as of today. Um, mm. And that's what I'm hearing. And I think I bet you are too, you know, in Twitter, email, whatever. The, the big complainers typically, and I don't mean to say it like they're, uh, they, yeah. they're right to complain, but right. the, the biggest group of people that feel shut out from this are of course the ones that are one generation too old to get it, but I think I also think they're the biggest group. I think, yeah, 
for existing computers, they, they may literally represent the biggest part of the of the you know, the installed base. This is pre Haswell. Yeah. Is that what it is? This is yeah, I don't know. It's post Haswell. I, I want to say that Sky, Skylake was sixth gen. I think seventh gen was KB or Cabby Lake, whatever that was. KB Lake. Uh, KB Lake. And I, those are the ones that are not getting it, although that could change. We'll talk about that in a second. Because, again, <laughs> this thing has been a whirlwind. It's stupid. Um, and then eighth gen, I don't remember the code name for that one, but eighth gen is when they sh they switched to quad core. Uh, yeah, quad core on the core processors. So, so the, the real yeah, issue, so. the real I think the reason it offends people <laughs> Is, <laughs> yes. There's so well, many, but go ahead. I was going to say, there's probably more than one. But, yeah. There's many, but is that, yeah. it's there's no obvious, like, cutoff. Reason. Yeah. No. <laughs> Between there isn't. the stuff they'll take and the yeah. stuff they won't take. It's not That's like right. there's big differences. Between Look, two, I, if, right? we, if we can st take a step back from being technology enthusiasts and being maybe a little too involved in this stuff and, and really think about it, you could make this argument, generally speaking, TPM makes sense, you know, security. Yeah, I, yeah. I, that, I think uh, you're right. If they had yep. said, look, we want this to be more secure, uh, we yep. know there's issues, they didn't want to say but that. I, I, it, I think there's a there's a deeper problem, though, at the, at the root of this. And I think it has to do with the fact that the PC industry had fallen for several years in a row from a unit sales mm -hmm. perspective. It had right. actually plateaued right before COVID happened. COVID saw an explosion of new PC sales, right? Which will probably continue through at least part of this year. I think they understand that it's going to it's gonna tank after this. And I think part of their mm. deal, part of their, I don't want to call it like collusion, but they got together with PC makers and they were like, mm. guys, look, we got to try to do something to save this. We're going to do Windows 11, not Windows 10 point something. Mm. We're going to have a new UI. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make these hardware requirements and people mm. are going to have to buy new PCs if they get it. Yeah, and you, I'm sure there was some said this the week before the announcement that did, this okay. was about selling yeah. PCs. Right. I think but, it is. Yeah. God, it is. that's an awfully <laughs> cynical uh, point of view. Maybe I'm going to maybe say give it a little bit nicer because Chris okay. Capicella is a nice guy. I want to give it a little <laughs> bit nicer gloss, which is. Um, well, by the way, sorry to interrupt, but. Chris uh, Capasol is also chief marketing officer, not chief financial yes. officer. So, yeah, so he didn't make this yeah. up. I understand. And he's his, not an engineer. His, well, no, no, I meant it's his idea. It's his role to put a happy face on this. Well, I think my, my more cynical view may be more of a bottom line view. But, but how about this? And it, by the way, it gets you the same benefit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Historically, and we know this, uh, people don't upgrade Windows. Windows 10 right. was an anomaly. Windows 10 was the big push from Microsoft get, to get everybody off the old and mm -hmm. secure platform. So they really pushed the upgrade. But really, historically, it's never been you go from Vista to 7 well, or from 7 to 10. Historically, you buy a new PC to get it to do the upgrade, yeah. right? That's right. That, that is true. That's so true. it's not unreasonable true. for Microsoft to say this is as usual with Windows for well, new PCs. There's just mm -hmm. one problem. Uh, the reality is Microsoft actually explicitly has said this. Not that normal people out in the world would ever know about this, but during the Windows 10 life cycle, they really changed the way that Windows updates work. And Windows feature updates or version upgrades are now delivered in a more seamless fashion than they ever were before, especially the last couple. And this version within is a gonna, major version number, though, right? But this version is they they and again, I'm, I'm gonna I'm paraphrasing this, but they explicitly said this: this will be de uh, deployed as a Windows 10 cumulative update. It's it's or, or as a feature update. They didn't say feature update, but it's okay. it's it's just another update you're gonna get on your computer. So, um, I, I I agree with you're right with what you said, but I when when w Windows 10. You can call it an anomaly, but I would say it's just the new normal way of doing things. And mm. when you upgrade from Windows 10 version 1709 to 2004, that's no different than going from 2004 to Windows 11. But from maybe from Microsoft's point of view, we're being nice about this and we're upgrading <laughs> you to 11. But you shouldn't that's expect <laughs> that. What if yeah. you if yeah, you yeah. if you don't have a compatible computer, we'll keep you secure through 2025. By the way, you. I think everybody yeah. agrees they're going to Daniel Rubino is saying on Sunday that they'll extend that. That'll that'll go 2026 and 2027 yeah. almost certainly because they've done that in the past. Well, may, certainly well, for paid. enterprises that want to pay. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. I don't, I don't think I don't At think you're going to 2025. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. And if you want the new version of Windows and you have a computer that's a couple of years old, what's the problem? You buy a new computer in 2025. Yeah, that's exactly right. They instead of right. they didn't play up the Windows 10 continued support enough either, right? Not only did right. they not be clear about the requirements, but then to soften that blow, they could have said, by the way, if you're on Windows 10, you can just stay on it for free till 2025. And by then you'll have a new PC, right? You probably will. And they could have done that. <laughs> that would have been another good way to kind of ease people into this, right? Instead, they kind of right. hid the fact that there was going to be a Windows 10 21 H2 feature update. And they didn't really play up the end of life date well, of I, 2025. To, okay. <laughs> I, by the way, you're right. I, 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 I you know, to play they devil's could've. advocate, I suppose they could have. But I, I think the point of this event and the announcement and what's happening now is to get people who are interested in something new excited. Yeah. And, it, it um, you know, there are very pragmatic things that we want to know. And we, and we later will talk about some of the questions we still have, especially around mm -hmm. support. But yeah. um, I think, you know, for, for the day, look, this thing's not coming out until October. Uh, and for some people, it's not coming out until next year. So we still have yeah. time for them to come up with more information and, and fill in the blanks. Yeah. But What if Panos had said, this is the new version of Windows for new computers, but don't worry. If you have an older computer, we're going to keep Windows 10 up to date yep. for years to come. That yeah. would have been great. <laughs> and I think, honestly, that's kind of what Apple does. I mean, yep. uh, yeah. this is for new computers. Isn't yeah. that? Yeah. And so, I'm well, just saying is, internally, yeah. that's what they yeah. thought. I'm sure they're shocked by this reaction. You know, honestly, if you think about Android works, uh, it's very similar. You know, you'll you'll buy an, and I don't remember the exact numbers. It's not super important, but you buy a, an Android device from, say, Samsung, and they have some support lifecycle where they say, "We will promise you'll get the next three version upgrades." You know, version mm -hmm. 12, 13, and 14, or whatever. Uh, but we will support you with security updates for five years or whatever the number is, right? So. Yeah. There will be years there where you're not getting the newest version of Android, but you are still being supported with security updates. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. yeah, this kind of maps to that. Of course it does. I mean, Microsoft and, yeah. and everyone does it. They look at what others are doing and they, is this good or is this, you know, and they they try to find the thing that works. And Microsoft's situation's a little unique because of the enterprise market. And they always have to have the little asterisks of the slash, you know, here it is for people, mm -hmm. here it is for companies kind of thing. But yeah, um, yeah I, you know, I, we... There's a lot of this in Windows. We talked about the different ways you can upgrade uh, parts of the system or apps are different now than they used to be. But this is very similar to how mobile platforms work. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I would I would guess that the vast majority of people who don't listen to Windows Weekly, uh, yeah. shockingly, um, <laughs> they kind of get it. They go, well, "Yeah, this is for I'll get this when I get a new computer because that's how I've always gotten the new version of Windows." You know, I, I honestly, yeah. I bet they're it's even more ambivalent. I bet they don't care. They don't care. <laughs> yeah. It's enthusiasts yeah. who are saying, man, man, I want to get Windows right. 11 on my PC, and it's only two <laughs> years old, and what's the matter? I know, but so yeah. uh, here's the problem, though. So when there's a big Apple event like <laughs> WWDC, and Apple announces um, you know, new versions of their platforms, or they have a hardware announcement, like here's the new MacBook Pro, the new Mac, iMac, you know, blah, 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 whatever. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, mm -hmm. there are always these little criticisms or, you know, concerns, but really what it really is, is a bunch of guys running around with flags screaming at the top of the lungs. You know, they did it again. This is why I'm on this side of the fence. I love it here. And on the Windows side, we're all like, what the, <laughs> what, what is going on? And it, 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 it stinks because Windows has yeah. been, I feel, undervalued for too many years. They're finally doing something. It, there's good reason to be excited by what we're seeing here. And they have to kind of ruin it by not being clear. And be, it makes them sound or f seem deceptive. Hmm. Um, it does. Uh, like yeah, like does. they're hiding and, something. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, like they are hiding something. Because like I said, a bunch of smart people in a room, you know they knew this was going to be a, a storm of controversy. And they're I like, yeah, they, let's go I'm with just it. Saying, that's what I'm saying is I bet they didn't. I bet they, oh, they thought, had to have. Really? Had to have. Yeah. But they you know, thought, you know, this is weird. Of course, this there was a Richard Clark it. in there warning them, guys, there's a problem coming. You got to pay attention. You know? <laughs> Yellow cake. I wonder, though. I wonder. <laughs> yeah, I do wonder exactly. because, you know what? If you knew, no, think about this. If you knew this was going to be a PR nightmare, you'd be really well equipped for this, right? You'd have talking points. You'd have extra documents you can point people to. You'd have, you wouldn't have every employee well, no, you've no, got no, no. on Windows. Wait, you wouldn't have everybody. Okay. Everybody 
giving different answers on Twitter to individual people, which, which oh, are that, conflicting just, with each yeah, other, right? right? <laughs> no, but that doesn't mean there, there, there weren't people in the company going, somebody, hello, is no one else seeing this? I mean, at some point, there's a decision-making level where they yeah. signed off on this. And they ha my point is they had to have known. Within Windows or within Microsoft, of course, there are people that yeah. have different access to information and they're just excited about what they're doing or yeah. what they know about yeah. it. And then the yeah. truth comes out and they're like, wait a minute. And then, you know, there'll be a little investigation or, in, you know, whatever, however they look at this triage the problem. And it's like, man, we should have really done better with this. But how how many times do we put it? I, it's, they never do better. <laughs> like why? No, it's, and I'll tell you, so we don't still have the answer. <laughs> like that's, that's the other true. thing. That's like, true. do you do we have an answer right now? Like if somebody well, says to you, so which processor is the cutoff? We don't know. Well, right now it is still eighth generation. However, this and but by they the way, this I will, seven, right? I right. So actually, I want to say I will say this. Look, um, <laughs> we have a rich history. Just just talk Windows ten, right? Just in the past six years, yeah. Some feature update will come out. All of a sudden, Kindles are crashing PCs or. You know, all these stupid problems are happening. It's like, how did this get through the cracks and blah, blah, blah. These guys never once stood up and said, we're sorry. We're sorry. Right. We screwed up. But what they say is they bring out John Cable, that poor guy, I assume. <laughs> He's gonna write and like, John, they like, got to write a blood. They're like, yeah. the process yeah. works. Mm -hmm. This just proves uh, everything's great. This is this has been the most successful yeah. deployment of any version yeah. of Windows ever. John, and we're going like, to want you, you to spend the weekend writing <laughs> blog posts. That guy must be in that place from one flew over a cuckoo's nest now. But, but here's the thing. This time, I, I got to give him credit for this. They came out. They actually apologized. They have never done that. Never done that. And they said, we will consider, based on the feedback we get during the beta, because they're going to allow people in with older chipsets, whether to include specifically seventh generation Intel and the equivalent AMD chipsets. I don't remember the version over there, sorry. Um, mm. And, and I, I, it is inconceivable that they won't, <laughs> right? right? You cannot throw that bone out now and not do it. Um, and right. I, and I, based on, again, this is completely anecdotal, just based on the feedback I get based on the PCs I've seen here in my own home yeah. of which I could build literally a Ford out of, um, seventh gen to me seems like the, the volume, uh, yeah. yeah. And I think that will, that will yeah. soothe a lot of hurt feelings. Um, okay. I wish they would just so, say now, like, you know, we're going to do it. No, if I, so if I'm Frank Shaw. I'm going to take Frank's <laughs> name in vain, the head of corporate communications. You know what yes. you do? Friday before a holiday weekend, you put right. out a, P a press release or a blog post and say, mm -hmm. we screwed up. Here are the requirements. And you do it over. And then people don't notice because they're already gone for the 4th of July. And then it calms down over the weekend. And then people talk about yep. it next week. And they're like, okay, they fixed it. Yep. That's what you do, right? <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I right. I'm I'm just going to bring something forward uh, that's later in the notes because I, okay. I um, as of I'm going to say last Thursday when they announced this, this to me was going to be the biggest controversy. Not any of the yeah. stuff we just talked about. Yeah, Windows Home, Windows 11 Home requires a Microsoft account and an internet internet connection when you set it up. That is insane. That is as dumb as Xbox One is going to require an internet connection at all times. And what about people on submarine dumb? Like that is that dumb. This other stuff is so bad. Nobody's even talking about this anymore. We've just come, you know, it's like, um, it's like, you know, I lost an eye. Yeah, but I got my, someone cut off my leg. That's worse. You know, like yeah. it's, it's like you have to choose between the terrible and you pick the one that's most terrible. And we complain about that, but. It's yeah. fascinating to me how there has been no uproar whatsoever over this Windows well, 11 Home thing. There's been a little, but nothing okay. compared to, you're right, nothing compared yeah, it's to gotten, It's gotten drowned out, yeah. Right. 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 right, right. I didn't think that was going to be, well, I thought, I thought among the people who listen to Windows Weekly, yes, that was going to be another point of outrage, the requirement to be connected to do home. But the normal people, I didn't think it would because- I think most of them well, already are. Connected. No, you're right. You're right. I, I yeah. I was right. telling. I told Brad this this morning. I, uh, and I, I don't mean. I don't do this to make fun of an individual. And but his name is Bob Smith. No, I, I mean, I, I got an email from. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I got an email from someone who said, you know, he relies on, 
uh, having a local account that's an administrator, and then he signs in his right. Microsoft account as a standard too. user. Oh, you did? I got him too. I got to tell you, just, just as a matter of course, <laughs> that is the yeah. dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Um, I was confused. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> here's, the most secure way you can sign into your Windows computers with a Microsoft account, that yeah. has two-step verification on the account. Yeah. And that is if you a secure your password. Yes. It has a recovery system. Yep. And yep. by the way, you don't, that's you don't the number one account. question I get on the radio show is right. yeah. I haven't gotten my password. Yeah. yeah. So but but just it's just as a matter of full disclosure, yes, if you're yeah. overthinking things and so technical that you know better than everyone else. Yes. You can yeah. sign into Windows 11 Home with a Microsoft account. You can create a local account. You can make that account the administrator. You can then delete your Microsoft account and go on your way. Yep. Don't ever do that. <laughs> that is the right. dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. But I know I, yes, I was trying I mean, to follow along, and I'm like, wait, I don't think I understand what he's doing is, because this seems really <laughs> weird to me. Do people yes. do that because if they they think if I don't have an associated Microsoft account, Microsoft right. won't know what I'm up to. Is that oh, why they do oh. that? Hmm. Well, I think they're afraid. You know, they hear, uh, people like your online the accounts get hacked, and maybe they someone hacks oh. the account. Yeah. But my point is, if it's secure, if it's a secure account, if you secure it correctly. This is literally the most secure way you can sign it. It's easiest, it. too, because I don't, yeah. half the time, I don't have to have the password. I just get a notification easy, on my phone and t press know, the number, and it's easy. It's yeah. so easy, and it's so secure. It's more secure. Yeah. And But people think if it's easy, it's not secure. Microsoft, they, think if, it, I, 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 they really yeah. need to push this security thing. I know I why know. they don't. They do. Because they the do. implication <laughs> is that we, <laughs> we aren't secure, which it's, right. they're not. So they're not. <laughs> they don't want to talk about it, but really, it's clear what they're up to. They want to be more secure, right? I anyway, know. that and guy's that, email address is... Who can be mad about is, that? Uh, <laughs> who can be mad? I, um, no, look, I... <laughs> It doesn't make sense to me that it requires a Microsoft account. It's sort of like, you know, if, if Microsoft makes, remember with uh, Windows 10, I think I might've said this last week, but it, with Windows 10, the, the idea was if we can get everyone on the same version, which we now know to be impossible, but as many people as possible, it will be more secure for everybody because it's easier to deploy patches to like a single version of Windows than it is to like 11 different versions of Windows, right? Yeah, it's right. better for everyone. It's not just yeah. self-serving on Microsoft's, it really is better for everyone. Yeah. With Windows 11, the the fake promise, because it's completely fake, is we, we said this last time, but now we're going to make it, we're going to draw a line in the sand and say that not only do we want everyone to be on the latest version, but we also need them to be on the latest hardware uh, because it's mm -hmm. more secure and they can make a case for that. But the problem is there's all these exceptions. They, they have exceptions right. for system builders that don't even need TPM chips. It's like, guys, you're either going to require this or you're not. If exactly. you're not... Stop pretending and just say your best experience is if you do have this, but we're allowing the other thing too. And I, and they are doing that, but they're not saying that. And I, I, I it's a little, so, again, it's, de it's deceptive. Okay. If you're Machiavellian, I don't know if they're Machiavellian enough to do this, but maybe, <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. When they announce the final version of Windows 11, <laughs> they give people a way around this, right? They're like, so... Just because you guys are so great, if you know enough how to, you know, use an ISO to load this or whatever, you're not going to be subject to the requirements. There's going to be something like that. There's going to be a little bone they throw, you know, so they could say we under promised and over delivered. Remember that horrible saying? Yeah, oh, it's, it's coming back. <laughs> Microsoft is becoming as patronizing as Apple toward its users. And this notion that they know better than everyone else, although I will say in the security context, they probably do, but they should. Um, I mean, is, they better is, know everybody better than yeah. us. <laughs> no, I know, but it, it's, it, 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 you know, there's always been this kind of uh, tug of war between it's my computer. No, yeah. you didn't read the licensing I know. agreement. I know. You, you know, true. you don't own Windows. That's ours. Yeah. You know that kind of thing. And I, and yeah. I feel like they're veering more and more toward that Apple slash literal reading of the use. You know, the EULA thing. Yeah. And I, no, I just my think it people the wrong way. I know, because I, because I feel like in the old days, people would say, okay, the main difference. One of the main differences, I won't say the main between Microsoft and Apple is that Apple assumes they know what's best for users and Microsoft lets, lets yeah. users figure out what's best for them, right? That's that was right. a big difference, but that difference yep. is getting smaller, right? That's getting way smaller. Oh, yeah. Do you think way, that's that, because times have changed and Microsoft's responded Yeah, well, they've that. seen, 
My, yes, of They've course. They've seen and Apple Microsoft. be successful doing that. But it also, that. Uh, too much freedom <laughs> really opens you up to security issues. It does. It does. It's and, a, by the way, it's not just that. support it's, problems. Yeah. I'm One right. of amazed, the problems. Uh, you know, being on the front line with a radio show yeah. really <laughs> underscores how right. difficult it is to use a computer for normal people. So one thing you may appreciate, I, I we had a conversation a year or two ago. I don't remember what it was. Well, there was one show where I talked about the 18 different ways you can reset your computer and uh, yeah. Windows 10 computer <laughs> or whatever the number is. You know, stupid. And I, my whole thing at the time was like, just pick a way and make it the way. But see, that's mm -hmm. always been the Windows slash Microsoft way. There are multiple approaches to different problems. Yeah. And they're, the, if you ask them why... Aside from the fact a lot of those people wouldn't even know there were multiple ways, they would have said, well, you know, our user base is so diverse and different, you know, we have experts and non-experts. We have to get, provide ways that work for everyone. But then you look at Apple over here, 15 years in, one way to do everything, one way, uh, if, it's, if it exists at all. But if it does, there's one way. And, you know, it turns out uh, people aren't as, maybe as dumb as we thought they were. Uh, they can figure out the one way. And that that one way leads to a, a system that's simpler and easier to figure out. Mm -hmm. um, I... I it, the, the problem is I'm used to Windows. I grew up, I'm Windows. You know, yeah. I, I think like right. Windows. If you right click the taskbar, this is something simple. In Windows 10, mm -hmm. you'll see a list of uh, 10 to 15 options with flyout menus and all kinds yeah. of stuff. You right click mm -hmm. the taskbar on Windows 11, you get one item. One, just one. It's all, <laughs> it's hidden. Yeah. And they're yeah. making the, these other features like multiple steps to get to. And this is their yeah. attempt to take this giant bowl of spaghetti and make it into a single strand or whatever. Yeah. And I appreciate what they're trying to do. I know why they're doing it. As a, as a, I hate to call myself an expert, but, but as someone who's very familiar with Windows. You're an expert. I find it's it, okay. I find, you I, you're I, an expert. I, I find it very often. Don't be embarrassed. I, there, <laughs> there's stuff in here that I just, I'm like, Really? <laughs> like seriously, I know. There, if you right click the desktop, the menu that comes up has a, an item at the bottom that says show more options. Do you know what you get when you <laughs> click that? You get what? the old menu from Windows 10. Oh, you do? It just, wow. and yeah. And by the way, the menu <laughs> looks completely different because it's a Windows 10 menu. So yeah. they're still giving you all the nonsense options from before. Mm -hmm. They're displaying it inconsistently because, you know, Microsoft. Yeah. And it's like, what? Just why? Have one or the other, you know, I why? Know. I know. They can't help themselves. It's crazy. I know. <laughs> I can't help so Leo, myself. I can't. Leo, I don't, no, know, I don't know if you heard. I don't know if Leo heard this, but what? I, what? I, I downloaded Windows 11 and I joined what? the Insider Program. <laughs> what? No, well, this is not frozen. happening. You're not, a, you're a normie. You're not allowed. I know. You know what? I did it. I did it just to Oops. see. Like, I did it again. <laughs> I did it once. <laughs> So I did which, it. Uh, can, I did it. Where did you do it? Good where for you. you do this? I did it on the on the laptop that you gave me, the HP one. That's a okay. Ryzen based laptop. Mm -hmm. yep. So um, not on your main machine, not on no, your Surface laptop. No, good that's okay. God, that's a no. good choice. No, <laughs> <laughs> I did. I'm it on not an idiot. Hey, <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> but right, but I'll hey. tell you. I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> Uh, so for me, it's been a fairly easy transition. Um, like going back and forth between 10 and 11 seems pretty easy. A couple things though, like you're talking about, Paul, are hidden yeah. that I was looking for. One was right. the power button. I'm like, where the heck is yeah. the power button? Yeah. <laughs> and it's I'm like, still, it's looking there. It is there, but it's, it's there. Yeah. But it, you have to go to... to the start menu button and click on it. And then it's tiny. It's this like little tiny power you button know what I, well, Here's the problem with it. In <laughs> Windows 10, you can yeah. open the start menu, uh, start menu. Yeah. And I, I think it's, I think it's shift tab and it, it, it tabs over to that control and you can use yeah, it. Yeah, right it's right there. It's, yeah. No, but in Windows 11, you can hit tab all it's day long. Hidden. Guess what? It No, it doesn't ever I stop know. on power. You have no. to click it with the mouse. And it's I like, know. guys... Seriously, you can also right-click the start button, right, and do that. 
Yeah, yes, you can do that. Yeah, actually, that's a, yeah, by that's the way, that's a good the point. easiest way to do it, right? Um, yeah. Actually, if you were using a keyboard, it is the easiest way because you can hit Windows key plus X and then arrow key to it. Yeah, you're right. That's the fastest. Come on, who does that? <laughs> well, I do. I Power do, users, um, if you're going to be in the insider program, Mary Jo, you've guys, got to. By the way, I'm gonna be, we've swapped no, roles because I, I hovered my <laughs> finger over the dev channel and then said, no. No. Not good. Yeah. No. I, I want know, my Valheim I to work. I I can't afford exactly. my Valheim not to play. No, that's why I'm like not on my main machine. Yeah, yeah, you're smart. No. Yeah. <laughs> if I had a spare machine, I would do it. I put it on a laptop and I brought that thing to Mexico yeah. City. And by the way, <laughs> I know. wasn't even an that wasn't even the was that like, was like the weird release. Yeah. He didn't even hesitate. He didn't even hesitate. It's like you're oh brave. leaked build. Here we go. Let's take it to Mexico. Yep. Yeah. It totally didn't bite me in the butt. It was fine. Friendly Manitoba says we can also, Mary Jo, create a uh, shortcut on the desktop to shut down if you want. Oh, yeah, that's yes, true. Yeah. That's true. I'm trying to uh, keep my, my desktop sorry. clean. I'm okay. My point, though, is I want, I want to use the keyboard as much as possible. And in Windows 10, and I don't. it's fa fairly so. easy. But actually, yeah. yes, you're right. Using the Win key plus X. Win X U yeah. U, Punter Joe says, will do it. Wow, look at you. Yeah. I'm going to do that right see, now. See, see, shut down, Paul. <laughs> Just do yeah. like I did that once. It's been, it's been a while since we did that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right in the middle of the show. Yeah. Oh, that man. was classic. Oh, man. Classic. I know. No, oh, don't do it. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Should I hit return, Paul? He's really good no. at following instructions. Right? See what happens. We'll just see what happens. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the days when it was all me, the whole thing. It was, was recording yeah, on the computer a, that I was using. A shoebox yeah. and a string. And it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. We MacGyvered this whole thing together. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've been doing this a long time. I, you know, uh, <laughs> the radio show is 17 years. Yeah, Twit wow. is 16 years. It's yep. like, what happened? It's, I think of that every time I see a picture of my kids from, you know, 10 exactly. years ago. And it's like, like who exactly. are these people? Feels like it was just Windows Vista a minute ago. Yep. So um, you're in the dev channel, Mary Jo. I'm sitting on yeah. the sidelines saying, have fun. <laughs> Do you like it other than the start, the power? I don't button? think it's that different, guys. Yeah, Mary Jo had the weirdest back. complaint I have ever heard in my life today. And this is I what know. happens when Mary Jo <laughs> starts. Okay. Let me just read this because I had to, it took me a second to understand what she was talking about. I was at the gym. I get back and it says, This is a weird knit, but is there a way for me to get rid of the little underscore on apps on the taskbar? And I was like, underscore? What? And that I'm like, looking, I'm like, dot thing. And I'm like, did she oh. somehow figure out? And I'm like, you mean the little thing looks like a pill? Yeah. And I'm like, no. <laughs> That's the act. That means that app's running, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 It's right, so right. annoying. Why is it there? I don't. So need that, that you know it's running. I don't care if it's running. <laughs> You're right. You're, that's an excellent point. In fact, right. it really is a hangover from the old days where you would close programs. Right. But thanks to that? mobile no one, right? devices now, nobody closes yeah. anything. Right. We just right. let it run. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's it's just point. annoying because um, when I see it, I'm always like, what's happening? Is there someone sending me a message? No, it's not okay, that. So it's just running. The interesting thing is um, <laughs> the, the Windows interface for launching apps, which uh, you know some yeah. people say is a start menu. I would argue it's actually yeah. the task manager. But yeah. um, the task manager is used both for launching apps and for seeing the status of running apps, right? So yeah. uh, on like Android, you don't see the status of running apps unless you go into whatever that screen, multitasking screen is called. Uh, yeah. On this, you know, it's a big screen. So we have a, you know, we can show, we can do both on, in, the, in yeah. one place. And to me, those little dashes, which are different sizes on different apps for some yeah. reason, which is really right. annoying. Like on, yep. like I, I look at yep. Edge and it's a tiny little thing, but on OneNote, it's yeah. really wide. I, you know, whatever. Yeah, right. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I do know why. It's because that's the current app. That's amazing. And there's a purpose to it. Anyway, uh, completely, I know, useless. It reminds <laughs> me of Mac OS. I, it just reminds me of Mac OS. And that makes mm. me kind of not like it. Now that you've pointed it out, it's like a little moat in the middle of the screen or in the bottom of yeah, the screen, I guess. I don't, I don't like I it. I would like to shut it off if there's a way, but there, I, I guess there's no way. I will say this, though. Um, uh, for some reason, even though I have both Teams and Skype set to auto-run at launch, for some reason, only Teams runs. 
And if you look down at a glance, you can tell, I can tell that Skype isn't running and it makes me click on yeah. it to make sure it's open. So, yeah, you know, right. there is a purpose, I guess. I yeah, I guess, whatever. It's very, it's very annoying to me. That's like my biggest annoyance about the UI so far. <laughs> yeah, so if this was a, there probably, there was an equivalent uh, yeah. UI, UI in Windows 7, I'm sure. Um, I don't remember anymore, but I'm sure, you know, they had like an outline around them or something. Yeah. I, I feel like the old Microsoft would have given you an option to disable that. Right. And I feel like the yeah. new Microsoft is like, no, they we're won't, not doing that right? anymore. I know. You know? There's I know. probably a registry setting in there. There'll probably there be third party is. utilities. Yeah. You know, Stardock is going to go to town on this. Yeah. Thing. I was going to yeah. say, Brad Wardell is going to solve this right away. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. There'll be a yeah. tweak 11 or something. And um, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Well, these things yeah. will be solved. This thing just came out last week, even though it feels like we would love it for six months. I know, right? Yeah. It's not, I turn you know, widgets it's off immediately, which is just, I, I'm like, nope, don't yes. want that. Yep. MSN News, no, no. no. I, I spent some time <laughs> on one computer saying, I'm going to tailor this thing to my likes. And after yeah. I got rid of the pop sugars and the people magazines of the world, <laughs> yeah, um, it still they keep popping gives me, up. yeah, it's still nonsense. And I'm like, this is no, not I know. personalized. You can't this ever is... really make it good. You can't. No, it's, ter it's terrible. I, yeah, it's terrible. I know. It looks beautiful, by the way. It looks beautiful. It does. It looks it's really nice, useless. but I'm like, uh, I don't want that ever to show up in any way. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I turn it off too. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, though, I found it really easy to figure things out. Um, it works a lot like Windows 10. It is Windows 10, right? It's Windows 10 with some pretty new icons and stuff. A couple right. new features, right? But, I mean... If you're if you're yeah. somebody who's afraid, like uh, I don't know, like it looks so different. Once you use it for like a day, you're already used to how it works, and you can use it. It's pretty well. Easy. Yeah, it, it's just there. There are these muscle memory things um, that I'm yeah. just used to. Right click on the taskbar, to, or right. the taskbar to get to task manager. You're like, uh, yeah. You know, it's not there. And by the way, task manager yeah. is in the WinX menu, so you can get to it that yeah. way. But and I think that, I think that's what they're trying. And you can start search for it too, obviously. Yeah. Um, I think they're trying to cut back on multiple routes to the same thing. And Which is I, good. I'm in favor of that, actually. I get. Honest. Yeah, I get it. It's just yeah. it's going to be a painful transition. It might. Know, uh, this is one of the problems I've had with Chrome OS. You know, you use Chrome OS, yeah. you're like, oh my god, like where is everything? It's like it feels limiting. But I, I think this yeah. is what they're shooting for. You know, simpler and maybe that's yeah. better for the masses. I did too. Yep. I do too. I think if you're not a power user, like I am definitely not, it's going to be an yeah. easier transition than it is for people who are power users, right? Like, I, think I didn't, I didn't even right. know. I didn't even yep. know you could right click in the taskbar in Windows 10 and have that menu come up because I've never done that before. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Mary, right? so it's been a while since Mary Jo and I have worked next to each other. But one of the things I noticed watching you work is that. <laughs> you use the mouse a lot to do things, and by the way, completely, completely normal. I, I didn't, I didn't yeah. mean that to sound like, oh my god, you're such no. a, I can't believe you do that because it's normal. No. But yeah. I like to keep my hands on the keyboard, and I yeah. use a lot of keyboard shortcuts. Exactly. And um, you know, we, you know, whatever. It's just two different right. approaches. It's fine. Um, yeah. I think because I knew too much about the way Windows works. Yeah. I look at this and I'm like, uh, <laughs> I know. where is everything? Like, what's going on I here? Know. Yeah. Um, whereas for you, it probably is not as much of an impediment. And that's, it's not. I think, I, literally what they were shooting for. No, I love, the one thing I was telling you today is I love the new start menu experience with the apps and the yeah. documents that you just recently opened right there because I feel Hello. like... I, I feel like I don't know where things are being saved anymore. And I know you're going to say, well, that's my fault because I could no, save no, no, as no, in a clear no, I'm path. Not say, right? No, not at all. No, by the way... <laughs> I, no, one thing that's I actually think is crafty and terrible about um, Windows in general is you can do something goofy like um, using like if you use uh, Notepad, typical. Yeah. File save as you save the file, you put it on your desktop. Yeah. It will save to the desktop now forever. There's no oh, okay. setting in this app okay. to say oh, no. The the fault is whatever. There the isn't, default right? is whatever. No. So you could do something yeah. goofy where you like I've opened I I um uh, I open a text file every week for like this. Uh, dinner order we do because it changes week mm -hmm. to week and I save it because it's kind of complicated and whatever. So I yeah. save it with a date. And once I do that, it wants to save the next text document to that folder. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, 
right? I have to keep changing it. It's like, what? I know. Uh, anyway, but- I don't even the, know where uh, things are saving right now on Windows 11. Like I, I looked, I'm like, oh, so some yeah. of it's saving in OneDrive. Some of it's saving locally. Some is saving yeah. over here, so there. I'm like, thank goodness for that menu that's on the start on the start menu. But here's because, the thing, that menu yikes. could be so much better and there are two big It could problems. be way better. The, Okay. Yeah, two, two big problems. There's there's a pinned area and a recommended area. The pinned area yeah. I get, but if you trim that thing down so it's the, you know, 12 yeah. apps you use the most yep, and you don't use up the third line that they have of icons, yeah. that line just remains yeah. there blank. It doesn't get yeah. filled in by the, uh, that's bad UI. That's just no, dumb. They don't need that. Yeah. Yeah. The other issue is recommended should not be recommended. That should be it recent. It because should. I have written... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 have, I don't even know how many articles I've written. I, I, last week I wrote 66,000 words. That's what I can tell you. I know that for a few I, wow. I get the report. <laughs> but here's the problem. I'm looking at this thing right now. These are the yeah. six recommended holds six items. Uninstall Greenshot, Greenshot, which is a um, uh, screen uh, screenshot application. PC Health Check, WD My Cloud, which is for my NAS, and then two image files. Those are my recommended files. There is not yeah. a single document in there. This thing should only be documents or you should be able to configure it, but I, it shouldn't be recently installed or downloaded apps. It shouldn't be, you know what's coming is actual recommended apps. Oh, you should download this from the store. You know this right. is coming. This thing would be so much more useful if it was what you want and I think what everyone really wants, which is recent documents. The thing you see in the Office app, the, the thing you see on office.com, the thing that they were showing in Windows 10X. I'd have to go back and look at the shots. But yeah. This thing, they've contorted this into something a little different. And if you click on more, so that it goes to the second mm -hmm. screen, I mean, of course, that yeah. shows me the, the big list. And in fact, it goes yeah. on for quite a ways. It goes back to last yeah. Thursday. But um, then there are documents in there. But I don't like the commingling of applications and documents mm -hmm. and, you know, like I don't either. Files. Agree. Agree. Yeah. I don't. And what do they That's do on the phone? They they don't commingle those, do they? Not on the Android launcher, <laughs> well, right? <laughs> I don't use their Android launcher, so I'm not 100% sure. But mm. I mean, obviously, when you go into an Office application, no matter where it is, your phone, computer, whatever, and yeah. you go into Recents, you're just going to see documents for that particular app. That makes sense. The system-wide yeah. UI should have documents, all types of documents, text documents, yeah. Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, yeah. whatever. Image files, absolutely. I, I feel like you should be able to configure it. Like me yeah. personally, I don't ever that need to go good. back and access a graphic that way. I just want, in my case, yeah. I would want Word, Word documents. Nope, that would be really good. That would be good. Yep. If you could put what you want there, and hopefully they'll, they're going to yes. let us do that, right? Yeah, <laughs> but it's the first release, you know, let's, I, yeah, yeah. it's just, a, as you use it, you're like, okay, there there are things, the simplification yeah. stuff where I'm like, eh, okay, I get it. Yep. The recommended yep. thing in start uh, doesn't make sense. I know. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, I agree. We have a lot of questions. <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, from the chat room. So, okay. let me take Wanna a little break now? and then we'll, yep. uh, okay. and if you are in the uh, Discord, raise your hand. We'll take some questions from the Discord stage as well. Um, there's so, so much people want to know. Yeah. So, um, for instance, I'm sure us, there's so much too. we can't tell them. Yeah, I was well, going to say, and us too. <laughs> well, but you're using it. So, for instance, Retcon5 yeah. uh, asks, does Windows key X do the same thing in 11 that it does in 10? Or is it yes. a different menu? It's pretty much the same, right? It's exactly the same. Here's the fun stuff, though, because Windows 11 includes Windows terminals. Remember, over the course of time, right. it went from command prompt to PowerShell. Now, yeah. Windows terminal is in the menu instead. Oh, exactly right. I like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. I That's like that. That's a nice that. addition. So, That's it the only comes change with I Windows can... terminal now is installed. Right. And it's the that. default terminal now. Yeah. For everything. That's how, yep. that's fantastic. All yep. Right. That's a great, that's a great addition. Lots more questions uh, to come. So don't, don't uh, just hang on to your hats. <laughs> okay. Hang on to your hats. But I want to talk a little bit about a brand new sponsor. Really happy to have them on board. Uh, probably, you know, the name in Dava, big uh, enterprise tech company. They have a podcast, which is so good because it's all about how tech is changing our world. It's called Tech Reimagined. Season two just came out. You you get, it's really, the people they get are fantastic. Um, big tech personalities, industry experts, Guy Kawasaki, Mary Williams, Alex Hunter, Brian McBride, Tom Groover, Dave Coplin, uh, Ian Martinez, Viola Llewellyn. I mean, some really great people on. And, and what the topic, what they talk about is 
the big questions about technology and uh, and in and, and the industries around it, how uh, these trends impact our daily lives, how our relationship with technology is constantly reimagined. I mean, that's the name of it: tech reimagined. So. For instance, I'll give you some examples, some great episodes I really liked. Insurance Reimagined, the role IT plays in the insurance industry, uh, guests Anna Norklet and uh, Kevin Crawford. Uh, th there's two episodes there. There's two episodes on the role of AI Reimagined with Boris Sergal and uh, Raghu Organon. They talk about the regulations, accountability, expectations that arise when using AI. This is a very hot topic, right? And what the future holds for AI and for individuals using it every day. Uh, which it turns out, I, I just found out our, our government uses it every day. Many, many, many government agencies are using face recognition, for instance. Shopping. Our shopping experience reimagined with the guests Thomas Beechin and um, Jeremy Mays. I thought this was fascinating, too. Some of the most significant shifts they've seen in consumer behavior over the last 12 months. I mean, COVID really jump-started a new way of, of shopping, uh, increasing the popularity of direct-to-consumer uh, or buy online, pick up in store. I think that's going to be huge going forward. And how the shift to digital is pushing people and companies to uh, reimagine the way we shop. You almost have to. And Dava, E-N-D-A-V-A. -A, I know you know the name. They've been doing this, reimagining the relationship between technology and people for a long time. And their podcast, Tech Reimagined, is a great way to, to learn about the relationship between people and tech on a deeper level with a look at some of the most recent uh, experiences with technology and its experts. Learn more about how tech uh, is becoming so much more in this world that's constantly growing and changing. A really good podcast, well-produced, fascinating material. I think you're going to like it. Look for Tech Reimagined. You can subscribe to it at your favorite podcast app. It's, again, Tech Reimagined, the podcast from Endava, E-N-D-A-V-A. -A. Subscribe and listen. I think you'll enjoy it. At least give it a give it a try. You don't want to miss this one. Uh, thank you, Andava, for supporting Windows Weekly. Are you ready, Paul and Mary Jo, to take some? Is questions? it the lightning round? It's the well. <laughs> it, I would say the lightning round, except that uh, you know how slow some of these things are. Let's see if we can get yeah. the uh, stage <laughs> the stage lit the up. Matt Ryder, boiling. Hey, Matt. Round. Good to talk to you as always. Questions for Paul and Mary Jo. Yeah, see, this is we've we've had this problem before, John. I'm uh, I've got the oh, do I turn up the uh, Discord? Let's see. Now can, can one two. There we go. I'm sorry. Hey, operator oh, error. Peb cack, and I'm the Peb. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> so, uh, Mary Jo and Paul, do we know how this lines up with the Windows SKU? Like personally, I'm running uh, Pro right now. Will that mean I won't be able to go directly? No, you uh, will, I believe, right? If you're on Pro and you're yeah, they should you just line Pro. up. I mean, so yes, you, they, Mary jo, they said that all were... the same SKUs, right? Yeah, exactly. but I thought, Mary Jo, no, did you, didn't you say there were some <laughs> possible changes? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and they're saying no comment when you ask about the details. Like oh. one I asked about is, I'm like, so is there a Windows 11 IoT SKU? And they're like, yeah, we'll have more <laughs> to share about that later. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> right. Huh. So like an immediate. Immediate deal killer for me would be losing uh, RDP support, which is a pro only uh, feature. So, like, how would the pro only features line up? Matt, you do IT, right, for churches? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. 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 I think, I think I don't you think go we from have, the one you have to the yeah. one you get. Right? I don't think like we have anything to worry pro, about. Pro. Home and pro yeah. is going to, I don't think, are going to yeah. change. Yeah, and enterprise cool. I also right. Like so it's the, I think it's those the oddball pretty... ones like I. There's some. Well, there's a there's a Windows 10 a, or a, an S mode issue. I believe that only <laughs> oh, S mode will only be supported in home, right? Well, I think um, it, it's so only home, right? They won't say. Oh, okay. I thought it was, okay. <laughs> I know. So they ha in their documentation, it, I've seen it say S mode will be in Pro. I've seen it say S mode will only be in Home. Um, I asked, and they said we have nothing to say at this time. I don't even know what that means, like why they can't say It's that. weird because they've communicated <laughs> everything else so well. That it's weird I know, that they right? thought part of this. <laughs> Come on. It's it looks like, like Zeus guys, 05 really? says that RDP and Hyper-V are both working right now. Oh, good. So, He's using that's it. I, I, that's I am, great. I'm, I'm using Hyper-V as well in Pro. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Interesting. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. That was my question. Appreciate it. Roland00 in our uh, IRC says, and I don't know if... I don't know what this means, so you'll maybe Paul, you can interpret it. If void tools 
search everything still works with Windows 11. Is that a third no. party? Uh, that must be a third party. Okay, tool. I don't know it. I you, think so. Uh, there's going to be 100% software compatibility. If it runs in 10, it's going to run in 11. You got to remember, 11 they're not changing anything. There's no dry, new driver model right. or anything, right? No. no, the one, the right. one, the figure they had for app compatibility on 10 was 99.9 .9 something. And then they, they have a, a program, I think it's called App Assure, App Assure it for is, Enterprises, yeah. that uh, they'll work with the company that made the software if they can to try to figure out how to get it to work properly. But yep. their their success rate on software is very, very high. So I, I don't think we're going to see it. It's not like the old days. You remember you used to have to do like application compatibility and screw around with the settings and try it. And get, this is, that's that stuff's over. So if it runs in 10, I mean, maybe you had to do something like that for that well, software in 10, but Roland's, it will run in one. Roland's clarifying. He says, Void Tools is an EXE file originally made for Vista, but it yeah. does work at 7, 8, and 10. <laughs> So, yeah, if it works in 10. If it works yeah, in 10, it good. will work in 11. All right. I think so, too. Uh, Jack K. is in our Discord. Uh, Jack, go ahead. Push to talk. Don't forget. <laughs> trying to, I'm looking at get, his... Uh, we, we are going to get good at this. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's really a Discord thing. What is that? I'm looking at his uh, avatar. I'm trying to think of... There we go, Jack. You got it. Go ahead. Uh, my avatar is a, is a bionicle from Lego back in the mid-2000s. Are you on a phone? What are you on? I can barely <laughs> understand what... Do, is this the phone the you Japanese got for... The Japanese have a top. <laughs> <laughs> is this the phone you got for subscribing to Time Magazine? Hello, Jack. <laughs> it, uh, I, we, Jack, I don't know what yeah, I don't know what's going on, but uh, it's sounding weird. Is that a... He said that was... I think he said that's bionicles. I don't know what that means. Well, that's funny. I don't. Everything search funny. is very popular. So void, void tools search everything, it's called, or everything search. Void tools. I'm not familiar with it, so. No, I'm not either. There you go. Uh, I'm sorry, Jack. I don't actually use Windows. So Got to get a better microphone, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Let's go to the UK. I'm going to invite Kev up on uh, stage. And of IRC, if, if you've got any questions, uh, go right ahead as well. Let me uh, see if Kev is on. There he is. Hello, Kev. Hi, how are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. Well, at least I know I'm hearing you this time. Yeah. My question, uh, change over with uh, Microsoft Office. Are they changing their layouts now? <laughs> yes, they're making yeah. them look more like Windows 11, right? Yeah. Yeah. So th here's the confusion oh, on that one. They announced a, a visual refresh for Office that they're testing in the beta channel. And everyone scurried to go do it. And if you had Windows 10 on ARM, I think you had to uninstall it, reinstall. It was this crazy process. Yeah. And then when you're done, you still have the same office. And people are like, "What's?" <laughs> Turns out wow. that hasn't actually. It's it hasn't been released yet. So ah. it's going to come out this there week. They said. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So keep checking. I've been checking every day. And they're also making uh, an ARM version, right? A native ARM yep. 64 version. Yeah, we'll we'll mm -hmm. talk about that a little bit later. Okay. But yeah, there's cool. a yeah some interesting stuff happening. Sorry. So what's the battery life being with a new system? Battery life. Um, yeah. They haven't put out any claims on this yet, right? I, I Why know. would it be any different? <laughs> well, that's just a question in case there was a difference. Yeah. I think or the biggest not. gains are going to happen down the road with those big little CPU architectures that are just yeah. starting to appear on the Intel side. Um I, I don't know. I, I just I just ran a bat. I did a battery, um, the battery, you know, the command line battery test on the uh, Windows 10 on ARM system. It was a lot lower than it should be, but I, I it, it might just be based on how I've been using it, and I upgraded it. And I, I yeah, I when you first do that upgrade, every time you install a new operating system, yeah, you play I, with I, it, I'm you not comfortable kill battery saying life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, I didn't. It certainly hasn't been a problem. So, like I said, I, I installed that leaked build. I used it on a laptop. I use it on the plane. I didn't have any battery life issues, but I, I can't say if it's way better or a little better or worse. I don't, I don't really know. Kev? You didn't notice that's the important thing. Thank you. Pleasure. Nice to talk to you again. Thank you for uh, joining us, and thanks for being a member of Club Twit. That's one of the benefits of Club Twit is this great Discord where you get to ask your questions in person. GK and the IRC had an interesting question. Uh, do you have to, if you're, if you're an insider... 
Do you have to like uh, uh, upgrade it on top of Windows 10, or is there a way to download and install Windows 11 directly? Right now, it's just uh, it's an upgrade. Only. It's an upgrade on top of. If you want to do a clean install, you could upgrade a system and then restore it, basically. But eventually, we're going to see. I, I, there are some leaked ISO type stuff out in the world. I don't want to get too far into that. But um, the the only official way right now is to upgrade restore typically uh, you don't see the isos until it's there's a release version right i feel like for the first version they should have done an iso they do isos periodical uh -huh. periodically in the uh, insider program <laughs> oh okay. i think a lot of people would want to try the clean install experience because yeah one of the things you're missing actually it's the opposite of missing <laughs> when you do an upgrade mm -hmm. is that there are apps in windows 10 that if you're doing an upgrade come uh, forward in windows 11 but I'm actually interested to see a clean Windows 11 install because there are apps that they will not install that you might have up, you know, gotten through the upgrade. Um, and I want to see the exact mix of apps that are actually are included with Windows uh, 11. So, for example, like uh, OneNote for Windows 10 is not one of the apps that is, in, you know, installed by default anymore. One of okay, let's try Jack K again. Let's see if uh, he's fixed his. Microphone hey issues. Oh, so there. much better. Yeah, Yay. there it is. <laughs> well, she, he sounds better nice. than we do. What's going yeah. on here? <laughs> Jack, where are you calling from? Yeah, I had a question. I'm calling from Denver, Colorado. Nice to talk I'm to a, you. Uh, software developer. Ah, yeah. awesome. Uh, I, I've been playing around with the uh, with Windows 11, and uh, I think the, the new store is good. Um, but it got me thinking about the way that they're packaging things, because now that they've opened it up for pretty much everything, right? It's not just UWP. Um, how are they going to manage updates? How do they manage security of updates for like a Win32 <laughs> app? I think, Paul, you mentioned this when it comes to PWAs. Have they said anything about managing updates for Win32 through the store? You know, I don't think so. I'm not 100% sure that's changed. I, I believe that if you acquire a... Right. Actually, I, I can't even say that. I don't know. <laughs> You know, it's it's confusing because PWAs, of course, are updated on the back end. So sending an app update through the store doesn't make any sense. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, this and a gets lot into of a tricky. Two apps do the same thing, right? Yeah, I, right. I mean, this is a tricky area. I, I guess let me think about this for a second. If you had installed like iTunes through the store, that app has its own updating mechanism, but I think the app updates did go through the store, so they must have done something to enable that. I don't know if that's optional. I think they or did because they were using the bridge. Yeah, yeah. I think I think things like iTunes was using like the Centennial Bridge or whatever they called it. But as far as I'm aware, they're now saying you can just push any any Win32 into the store. So yeah, then, that's what I'm. Yeah, I, they yeah. they right. They want you to use is it like MSIX or whatever the modern packaging format is, but you don't have to. Right which you used to have to. And of course, the other half of the equation is now those apps that you package for the store, you can also distribute yourself over the web if you want. Mm -hmm. So the security element mm -hmm. is, it's not necessarily as safe as it was before, but. But you it, know, this is can the, I chime in here? Yeah, because please. they implied when they talked to us about this years ago that there was gonna be That's some kind of a new trust mechanism, right? right. And that there'd right. be a way that you would know if, a, if an app was in the store that Microsoft had somehow approved it and verified <laughs> it, but they never explained when they announced Windows 11 what that is, right? I don't if think it exists. I, I think they basically arrived at the fact that <laughs> Windows users are used to installing apps over the web and the trust model is you, you trust them or you mm -hmm. don't. I mean, Windows 11 still has that kind of uh, smart screen technology where if it's an unknown provider, you know, it isn't signed or whatever, you'll get a warning and it does everything it can to prevent you from trying to install it. Uh, in fact, the app I'm going to recommend uh, later in the show is throws up that warning and that may, may be as dumb and as simple as that. I, I yeah, that's a good question. I, I, I don't 100% know. I'm sorry. Jack, do you develop uh, apps for uh, Windows? I don't. I develop microservices for um, cybersecurity training. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I appreciate uh, yeah, your cool. being in the club. We don't end up doing a lot of uh, Windows dev. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. You're lucky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'm de terrible. <laughs> terrible. I should no, 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 no. I shouldn't no, say no. that. <laughs> no, you're right. Windows development is a mess. <laughs> my, my job is a lot simpler because I do not have to develop on Windows. I'll say that. <laughs> Microservices are in JavaScript or? These are uh, Go. So Go? It's, uh, oh, cool. It's, it's, oh. it's actually a language developed by Google. Yeah. I know Go. It's really I cool. love it's Go. A, yeah. 
You're a, you're kind what they call a gopher. Like C++, but simpler. <laughs> a yeah. gopher. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I love Go. I think it's a really uh, interesting language. Well, I really it's nice. Like it. Nice. Yeah, it's 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 simple but powerful. What did you use before Go? Just out of curiosity. Python mostly. So that's a pretty easy transition, I think. Python to Go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you can learn points. <laughs> like, yeah. uh-huh. mm-hmm. You um, might how think much that. Uh, how much time do you have, Leo? <laughs> Jack, <laughs> Jack, thanks so much for uh, for yeah. being a member of the club. We, we thank you for your support. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, sure it is. Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Tony Tech, you're next. Hi, Tony Tech. Hello, guys. You hear me? I uh, hear you. Hello. Great. Welcome. Good. Good. Uh, quick question. Um, since since there is no Win 11 ISO out there, so we can't really test it. But my question is, um, do you think a Windows 7 key would activate a Windows 11 ISO? Oh, that's pretty good. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, that's funny. I, I have not tested that. That's a great. That's great. I, I am going to test that now. I can do that in a VM right now. Um, All right. I, I don't can know. chime in with a little something here. Yep. Um, I'm going to read from something I'm not supposed to have. Okay. Here we go. Oh, boy, this is exciting. <laughs> Any right. device that meets the minimum specs can run Windows 11. However, Windows 7 devices will likely not meet the minimum specification requirement because of age and generation of the processor. Um, if a customer with a, with a Windows 7 PC that meets the minimum specs wants to upgrade, they will need to purchase a Windows 10 license uh, and proceed to upgrade oh. to Windows 11. So what you should do then, I'm guessing, Tony Tech, is yeah, upgrade, upgrade to 10. 10 first. And that, that yep. as far as I so know, works. is that still work. free. You can still do it for free. Yeah. You can. They never yeah. turned that off. They never did. That's fascinating. So I'm going to try this. Is uh, this? I'm going to make, I'm going to look into this now. I can do this. So I'm going to find out. Um, but I bet that's an interesting thing. So at least you could work around, at least for now, if you have to. Might want to get a Windows 10 install going. Just throwing it out there. Yeah. Is there some reason you stayed on you know. seven, Tony Tech? Oh, he's muted. Well, he might have like an MSDN thing or something that has like. I'm looking know, behind him. It looks like he's got every operating system ever made on right. those screens behind him. Some reason you didn't uh, upgrade to ten. Oh, he's making sounds, but <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't, I don't hear him. Do you there not hear go. me? Yeah, hello, hello? yeah, you were muted. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I've been living off the Windows Seven key forever, <laughs> so I went from yeah, Windows Seven yeah. to Windows Ten. Cool. I just upgraded to Windows Eleven now on my Surface Pro. Yeah, um, once you're seven. at ten, you don't need a key anymore. Right. So, yeah, that's it, right? Yeah. So uh, the key yeah, is because you've got the, you got that digital. You got the entitlement. The, the entitlement. Yeah. Yep. We are so entitled. perfect. You're right. entitled, Tony <laughs> Tech. Hey, it's nice to nice. Where are you calling from? Uh, New York. Nice. Let's just take County. Also hot? Yep. Very hot. Very hot. That's what Mary Jo like says. 90 yeah. degrees right now. <laughs> yeah, today's the end of it, I think. I think it's going to be nice. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, thank you so much for joining uh, Club Twit. I really appreciate it, Tony Tech. Not a problem. Thanks, take guys. Care. That's an awesome Bye-bye. question. I can't believe I haven't thought of this. See? Awesome questions from our club. If you're not in Club Twit and you want to support everything we do here at Twit, including Windows Weekly, $7 a month gets you ad-free versions of all of our shows, the access to the great Discord and the Twit, Twit Plus feed, where garbage that we left out of the podcast and are not heard anywhere else will, will flow to you. Uh, <laughs> that's a mean thing to say. It's not garbage. It's good <laughs> stuff. It's, uh, it's the cutting room floor. It's, the, it's like the pre-shows, the post-shows. Uh, we put new shows in there as well. Mid shows, we all kinds of shows. Also, it's like of Lost. Eventually, you have like uh, cast forwards and cast backs. And <laughs> all kinds <laughs> of stuff. Here's from the uh, friendly Manitoba has posted a link in our IRC from the Windows Club. Mm-hmm. Oh no, this is a Windows 10 uh, install, clean Windows 10 install. Uh, so never mind. I mean, but, you could just download a Windows 10 ISO yeah. easily. You know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, it's funny that they never turned that off. I got to do this. I want to do this right. Can we start end the show right now? Yeah. I'm gonna go. <laughs> you know, I could do an ad while you're doing that. Uh, you're not yeah. going to do it on the machine you're using, are you? Oh, no. Oh. No, I gotta do, I'll do it in a VM. Do it in a VM. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, man. Well, all kinds of things, Leo, but... Yeah. Hmm. Do you, uh, you want to do any more uh, Windows 11 stuff? You have lots more in your rundown. 
Have we covered yeah. uh, everything? No, oh, my God, should, yeah. We've got so we much to do. We should definitely talk about more. All right. Well, hang on. Paul is going to install Windows 10 on top already, of Windows 11 on top of Windows 7 or using yeah, a Windows might, 7 might, key. Uh, might not happen during the show. Oh, I'm just trying to create on. suspense. That's all. And uh, <laughs> we'll have more in a, more in a moment. Uh, uh let me ask you, if you had the choice between you're dealing with a business, emailing them, phoning them, or texting them, wouldn't you rather text them and, and communicate via texts? I just brought in my, uh, my car to the dealership. I said, don't call me, text me. These days, customers have gotten kind of used to everything on demand. I think probably because of quarantine. You know, we've, we're just used to it, getting blockbuster movies released at home, curd side pickup from your favorite restaurant, remote health checks, and, and a simpler way of doing business. No matter your product, you need Podium. More than 90,000 local businesses of all sizes use Podium for text messaging to their customers. Whether you have one location or 1,000, Podium can help you stay ahead. Uh, how? Well, I can give you a lot of different ways. Podium makes doing business as easy as sending a text because when texts get opened, business gets done. Uh, are your employees, you know, trying to respond to email in a variety of places or they answer the phone? With Podium, you get a single text inbox. The employees have access to makes it easy for them to respond. They respond faster. Customers are happier. If you're answering questions, you send a text. If you're collecting reviews, and by the way, this is extremely effective, as you're, it's literally happened to me. We had uh, uh, a company come pick up our, uh, our, uh, you know, kind of extra goodwill stuff, and as soon as they left, we got a text from them saying radar service it was, and of course we did because it was easy. We were already on the phone, uh, and your reviews can go to Google, Yelp, wherever you want. Scheduling an appointment on delivery, or a delivery, uh, send a text. It's the best way now. My hairdresser, my dentist, that's how I do it. Payment collection, yes, Podium can do that too. Send a text. Retailers increasing revenue by allowing customers to shop literally via text message. Because even though stores are opening up, a lot of us, we got used to the convenience of doing it from our house on our phone. A jeweler just sold a $5,000 ring with a few text messages and, and even coordinated curbside pickup, all with Podium. Podium helps you do uh, collections, too. There's a dentist in New York. Had a million dollars in overdue collections. It happens, unfortunately. So what do you do? He used Podium to send out text payment requests. They could pay in response to the text. Boom, boom, boom. It was so easy. It turned out, I guess, a lot of these people, they just forgotten or didn't get around to it. He Of the million dollars, he collected $700,000 in two weeks. 70%. Texting just works better. Today's customers expect on-demand everything, even from local businesses. Stay ahead of the competition with Podium. Podium has free plans if you're a growing business, but do it with the confidence that as you, you know, as you grow, Podium will scale with you and get up all the power you need. Get started free today, absolutely free, Podium, P-O-D-I-U-M. Actually, do me a favor. Go to podium.com slash WW. That way they'll know you saw it on Windows Weekly. That really helps us. Po and you, that way you can try it all out and see what it does. It's really great. Podium, P-O-D-I-U-M dot com slash WW. Don't forget that part so they know you saw it here. Thank you, Podium, for your support. WIC update on the product key thing because I already tried it. Um, you are awesome. You are so, awesome. You are amazing. Well, I'm not, uh, you know, um, I, Windows 7 Ultimate product key. In, it, remember, if you set up Windows 10 or 11, you can enter a product key in the beginning and it will install the proper version of the operating system. I usually say I don't have a product key and then I select the version I want to install. This time, just for the heck of it, I thought, because it could fail here and it wouldn't mean anything. But I, I used the Windows uh, 7 Ultimate product key and it worked fine. It went right by it. So it worked. Now, here's the caveats. This is the first public release. This could change before the final, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's not definitive, but I, I but the Windows 7 product key I just used did work. Now, we'll see if it activates, in, you know, it, it's, but it, it, it was enough to get through it. Um, I have seen that fail 
you know, in certain circumstances where the, pro, you know, it's the wrong product version or whatever for the key. So I, I, interestingly, so not, again, not, not the answer, but I'm, that part actually got by it. I'm really surprised by it. So that is interesting to me. Do they, so one of the things Steve liked about Windows 11, which still cracks me up. Uh, rounded corners? <laughs> no, it was not rounded corners. He said they install fewer <laughs> junkware things, but Zucky, Zucky in our uh, chat room yeah. says that they still do candy crush and all that stuff. Is it, do they still install all that stuff? I guess since we can't do clean installs, we don't really know. I, I've not seen, well, uh, we can do clean installs, Leo. It's just not official. So I haven't seen any crapware. Oh. No, that's not, a, well, they, you know, they put stuff in start, right? So right. I, on this system, but without I live could, tiles, will there be stuff in start still? Yeah. Yeah, there's um, like because, Xbox in mine, even though, of course, that wouldn't normally be No, but there. that's not crapware. That's <laughs> crucial. Um, no, Solitaire. Solitaire. Okay. Solitaire. Come on. Again, no, pad, no pad wasn't even there. I had to put it there myself. But they put in Solitaire. That just tells yeah. you their priorities. I think yeah. that's the, those are not the apps we're referring to, Mary Jo. Um, <laughs> but, yes, they are. Uh, they are. Anything, oh, anything. Well, I know a writer, a professional writer, who the first thing he does when he gets his Windows machine is uninstall Solitaire because he says, if it's installed, I'll play it and I won't be writing. Yep. Yeah. It's distracting. Yeah. 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 Um, the, you know, if you're familiar with Windows 10, you know that there are certain live tiles that appear by default uh, and they change by system that are not actually installed. They're, they're, they install the first time you click on them. And Windows 11 has that as well. They're not live tiles, they're just icons, but you'll see some weird icons for apps. You're like, what is this? Like one of them is Adobe Photoshop uh, Elements and uh, it, clicking on it triggers an install, which I, you know, again, I think is a little deceptive. Uh, you're like, oh, cool, this computer includes, a oh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> it does, yeah, I was surprised about that too. I was like, oh. Yeah, I'm <laughs> surprised it's <laughs> a notepad. That's bizarre, but it's in the uh, store, well, right? It's. It was there. I, it was on my machine. It just wasn't it's, it's showing in, up yeah. in a prominent yeah. place oh. as it should. <laughs> Windows key it's, N O T. Yeah, I strongly recommend pinning it to your taskbar. There I you did. Go. There you of go. Of course, I go. did. That was the first thing I pinned. Or just leave it open. <laughs> just leave, yeah, right, leave it right. open at all just, times. Um, yeah, configure to run at lunch. You know? Run at lunch. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's what I should do. Yes, Why do I, do that? I do that with Emacs. <laughs> it's always there. Yeah. Um, yeah, Emacs is my notepad, sort of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was gonna say, uh, yeah, sort, sort of. of. Sort of. <laughs> it's my operating system. It's like with a um, mediocre. Sometimes editor. I like to drive an aircraft carriage to the uh, McDonald's <laughs> drive through It's, it's uh, you know, it's sort of a car. I love Emacs. <laughs> I do. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, what else? Boy, there's there really is a lot to talk about, yeah, isn't there? there I is. know. Yeah. I know. Um, Paul, did you already say this? You're, you're calling. You're saying to put it in perspective. Yeah. I right now, it, it, it Windows 11 to me is the new Windows XP. Now I know as soon as I say something like that, someone's going to say, "Oh no, no, it's the new Vista." It's the, you know, okay, we all have our little pet you know things that we think it is. But the reason I say that is because. Windows 2000, the original dream there, and remember that was going to be called Windows NT 5.0 at first, was going to be, this was the version of the operating system that combined the, the compatibility application and driver compatibility of Windows 9X with the security and the foundation of Windows NT. And they got about 85% of the way there. And so just one year later, a year and a half later, they released Windows XP. And Windows XP had two major changes. It had the uh, full driver compatibility set. So they finally did the comp and app compatibility. They did that. And, uh, and it had a new user interface, which at the time was going to be the foundation for UI for the next 10 years. And that didn't pan out for a couple of reasons. It was based on bitmaps. Apple the same year came out with a hardware accelerated graphics for Mac OS X, made it XP look stupid. The design they built for XP did not scale well. Um, they had a really hard time coming up with additional themes. Like the plan originally was that, you know, by the end of the first year, there were going to be dozens of themes, different color schemes and all kinds of stuff. It was just too hard. Um, but that is what Windows 11 is, right? The foundation is Windows 10. It's the same system, but UX change, right? And, um, you know, it's just it's just a pretty, you know, prettier, I guess, subjective. Some people don't think it's prettier, but mm -hmm. hopefully the thing that will really put this over the top of the next XP is they'll allow you to go back 
to the older UI if you prefer that, which by the way, they did in Windows XP. That was one of those things. If you wanted it to look like Windows 2000, it wasn't 100% right, but um, you could get that kind of classic Windows desktop. And I, I, I hope and expect there's indications in Windows 11 right now um, that you'll be able to do that with Windows 11 yeah. as well. So, I'm, I'm really surprised you would call this XP. I would call it Windows 8.1. <laughs> oh, eight one yeah. or eight one one? That's the question. Yeah. Oh, wow! I just you mean, guys. I mean, it's a fairly <laughs> minor upgrade that's made to make things nicer. You know what? I'm tired of both of you. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could have called it Windows Me, but I didn't. Uh, I, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I was like I, XP. Wow, really. <laughs> Yeah, d digging digging through the archives so there. So you're saying it that because XP was just a skin on top of NT, basically, right? Yeah. Which became a, one of the most popular releases of Windows ever. Well, but right? only because Longhorn never happened. Right. On, it never happened, right. actually, right? But they delayed, right. delayed. They, they had to keep refreshing XP. They did SP2, yeah. which normally they would have charged for. They did... It's something called XP Reloaded, which that you know they didn't talk about in marketing, but they yeah. kept, you know it, it was kept in market for so long. Yeah. For a while there, it seemed like we would never surpass XP, but actually Windows Seven eventually oh, did, yeah. and then uh, Windows Ten yeah. now has surpassed Windows yeah. Seven. Okay. I never liked the XP interface. I really did like Windows Two Thousand. So and Windows. Yeah. One of my one of the toughest things for me was I in writing criticized it as a sea of blues and greens. I will never forget this. Yeah. And I don't, Mary Jo, you may remember Mark Croft was the guy who worked on the XP yeah. UX. Um, mm -hmm. He uh, took great exception to that because it was his idea, I guess. Oh. And uh, he didn't talk to me for several years. And then <laughs> I, well, I, you know, I ran into him at, uh, it was probably still tech at the time. It was many years later, I ran into him and I apologized. And, and he, <laughs> He said, you have no idea how much that means to me. I was really hurt by that. <laughs> and I, oh. I felt terrible. You know, I didn't mean to insult oh, him. Oh, man. But. You insulted a lot of people at Microsoft. I said years. worse. I call it the Fisher Price <laughs> interface because it looks like a Fisher yeah, a kid's yeah. toy. And, but it was I mean, I, very. I, red, I green, liked blue. it, but the, remember the the the, in, the insult of the Windows XP UI, and this was especially bad in Pro. Uh, actually, it was called Windows XP Professional. Remember the day was by default they had that stupid Bob search dog thing oh, God. in, in yeah. the Explorer windows. Yeah, you could turn yeah. it off. Right, you're like, great. I want to turn it off, I'm, but it would, it would, it would go, bye bye, and then it would walk away, and it would look over. Oh, are you, are you sure? Because I love you. Oh, you're killing me. Okay, like, seriously, just turn it off. I know. Like, what, what's insulting. With the animation? That is really oh, insulting. Awesome. It was it's just ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> somebody from Bob was still around. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's exactly what. No, not only, not only. Well, she was still around too, in a way. But she cashed in on Bob. Let me tell you, yeah. she's the only she one. She really outlasted got, all of us. Yeah. All right. And why do you? But wait, wait a minute. Why do you call it Windows oh. 8.1, Mary Jo? Uh, oh. Windows 8.1 because it's a minor upgrade. Yeah, but That's Windows 8 was a horrible yeah, but, version of Windows. So here, all right. right so. so it's not an act, it's not a great parallel eight one, but I just mean it's a pretty minor update to the yeah. Existing. No, I, I think I, that's what Paul's so saying as well, right? The diff, but the difference between um, you know two thousand XP and eight and eight one was Windows eight was a disaster. It was, and, and no, I, I, well, I, I ten is not to, a disaster right. by any means. I referred to Windows eight one as a as an apology. It was like we're sorry we took yes, away the start. That's button. how I thought. By the way, yeah. yeah, we took away the start button for a little while. I mean, I it was know. like, what are you yeah. doing? Okay. It's not a perfect so, analogy. I'm just trying to make it be minor and not a major <laughs> yeah, yeah. thing. I agree. That's all. Listen, it is, guys, it is minor. It's I already made the perfect analogy. I don't know why you're trying to build on it. <laughs> Let it hang. There. XP. I always think of XP <laughs> as a big deal, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Windows 11 is a big deal. And just to be clear, Microsoft never said Windows 8 is the last version of Windows, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, al Thank it almost was. <laughs> it almost was. It almost was Remember, for the wrong the way, reasons. <laughs> uh, Windows XP was the first version of Windows to support integrated wireless networking, right? Oh, and it was a disaster in the beginning. It would just it would attach to any network at all. It was like no security at all. <laughs> Windows... <laughs> Windows 11 is the first version to support Wi-Fi 6E, I think yeah. it's called. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And th there's a little artificial limitation there. I mean, I'm yeah. sure you know, there's no reason 10 couldn't support this, but yeah. that'll be one of the yeah. things. You know, you want the new router, you want the new PC, you know. You right. Oh, that's interesting. 10 does not. So 
right. but you, but also you have to have a, a hardware that supports it, right? You or do. no? You do. Yeah, you yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> no, you do. It. You do a 6E, but it will do whatever you have. So if you have a Wi-Fi yeah. five or Wi-Fi yeah, yeah. six, it's, a, uh, yeah, it's yeah. downward compatible. Sure. Yeah. Yep. yep. Support. What's the support status? Yeah, what is the support yeah. status? So this is good. This was the good news. The big, To me, one of the biggest pieces of news when they launched this, right? So only mm -hmm. one update per year for Windows 11. <laughs> Home and Pro get 24 months of support. Enterprise and Education, 36 months. So both get more, right? Uh, they also made that offhand comment, updates would be 40% smaller and happen in the background. What they meant there wasn't feature updates. They meant security updates. Uh, updates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but still, that's good news, right? Um, and yeah, there and is going to be... If you look at Windows Update... I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, so if you no, look just... at when... <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just, I was just going to add, and there will be a 21H2 this fall, which will have, thir I would assume, 30 months of support, right? Like H2. So I have questions, H2. though, here. So if you look at WinVer yeah. in Windows 11, yep. it says Microsoft Windows version 21H2. Right. Uh, so are they going to... It's built on the, the versions, core. I guess? It's built on the okay. Windows 10 core, uh, Cobalt, right? Cobalt is what's going to be 21H2. Okay. And what happens, yeah. let's say it's uh, October 2023 and my support yeah. is now run out for Windows 11. Does that mean we get Windows 12 that year? Do we get Windows 11.1? They won't Do answer. Get, yeah. They won't say. I need, yeah. we need to know this. This is because um, so far I like what I'm hearing, but these are important yeah. questions. There are many questions. Another one is people have asked, will there be extended security updates available paid right. for enterprise customers for Windows 10. We don't know. They won't answer that question. I, um, <laughs> I think it's reasonable to assume you're going to see that. I would guess, right? yes, because they're, just, they're trying to make it so that it's a... The one thing they're doing that's the opposite of Windows 8 is they're not just trying to shove this down people's throats. They're trying to make the transition smooth and easy, especially for IT. That's good. They the learned other, that The other lesson. thing you could do right. is just do a little bit of math here, right? So Windows yeah. 7 arrived in 2009. Is that right? I think so. Yep. Yeah. Windows and Windows... Yeah. Uh, am I right? Yeah. 2009. So. Windows okay. 10 yep. arrived in 2015, a six-year right. gap. Yep. Windows 10 arrived in 2015. Windows 11 is arriving in 2021. That's a six-year gap, mm -hmm. right? So maybe paid support is the way to get people over the line, even though actually Windows 10 will now be supported for that, you know, additional whatever it is, four years, uh, four years, four years. Yeah, four years, which to make, you know, it's interesting that Windows 10 landed on the exact 10-year life cycle that they've always yeah. had for Windows, you know, mm -hmm. at least with Enterprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that kind of experience anyway, tells you something. It's like they, they never planned not to do it, right? It's just because this doesn't just like happen. I think they're not that evil because they could have just said that in the beginning and they never did. And yeah. th th these right. questions we're asking now are very similar to the question because they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's supported for the lifetime of the device. Right. What the, what the lifetime meant. of the device? What does that what mean? What does that even mean? Yeah. It doesn't yeah. mean anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Until you really should get a new one because we've got a new version of Windows. <laughs> That's yeah, what it means. Right. right. Oh, your life. Oh, your device. No, the life cycle. It's just ended. <laughs> it's weird. It's a weird coincidence, but yeah, yeah it just ended. Yeah. And ten. So we said twenty twenty five. They're mm -hmm. going to continue to do. Uh, are they going to continue to do the twice a year updates? Because didn't they say they're only doing it once we a year know. now? We don't know. We don't we, know. We, they we, won't we, say. Once a year for eleven. I mean, there right. may never be another Windows ten feature update. I, I, you could yeah, argue, why know. would there be? Right? They don't need to. Yeah. They Windows don't 11 is the feature update. <laughs> well, first of all, the apps are going to be updated. You'll get updated apps. They have yeah. other ways of adding features to Windows. That's what feature experience packs yeah. are. So if they yeah. want to update the features, they can do it without a feature update. They yeah, can do cute updates. I think that's updates. fine. I'm no, I'm not I think upset. it's fine, too. Yeah. But here's the thing. Yeah. Just say it. Right. I Sell know. us what you're going to do, and you can change it. Do they well, know? know. Part, is that possible? They, they don't know. They won't say it. They won't They know, but... But I'm guessing part of the reason they won't say some of these things is they're waiting to hear from their biggest customers, their biggest enterprise customers. Like, are they going to say to them, look, guys, you've got to do another LTSC long-term closing <laughs> channel of Windows right, 10. You have right. to, right? And if, right. if somebody who's a huge customer paying you multiple billions of dollars wants this, you are going to do it, right? That's it. Yeah. If, if, win, if upgrading to Windows 11 is as easy and seamless as they say it is, I guess the only remaining challenge is... Is it different enough that it might require companies to do some retraining 
Yeah, it is. May, may, is it? Yeah, maybe. It maybe yeah. just move in you, the start button into the middle. But what if you could? That's it. But what if you could do a Windows 10 mode? You know, where it looks like Windows right. 10. Yeah. And that right. could. If you could do that, maybe not. That could I mean, completely be possible in the final version. Yeah, right? it, it could yeah. be something you could trigger as uh, part of your corporate install, yeah. like it's you know, it, policy edit. Yeah. 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 Maybe. Um, you, if anybody who works on a help desk knows that even the smallest change. Yeah. It'll Where'd your start so button go? Right, Look I, to your right. right. Okay, but it used to be in that corner, and now it's over, it's here. over here. Like, why? Right? And then when you click on it, you click on it, it looks very different, guys. It looks really, Does it really, really look different? I, no tiles. Yes. Briefly, live tiles are gone. I want to There's briefly no remind tiles. the audience yeah. <laughs> how evil Microsoft was when Windows 8 was coming out, because... They had UIs like the charms and oh, task undis switching. totally undiscoverable. Undiscoverable. Yeah. So what they did was some testing, and the it was they, we didn't have an insider during the beta program. They tested. They had a video that happened during the out of box experience. That here, here are the new UIs. Here's how they work. And what they found was that really helped people understand how it worked. And then they said, "Yeah, we're not doing that." Exactly. <laughs> like. Yeah, they stupid. knew. Like this, no, they yep. knew people were going to freak out, and they're like, "You know what? Yep. They're going to get past yeah, it. It's, it's going to be fine. It's fine. It's fine." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The problem with that attitude, aside from the obvious stuff, is people would trigger UIs and be like, oh, what's that? And then it would disappear. Yeah. And they'd be like, I don't know how I did that. <laughs> yeah. I might have hit some weird combination of keys, know. you know. Stupid. Know. Just so yeah. stupid. I know. We're past So, that. yeah, there's more things we don't know right now and that Microsoft won't answer than we do well, know. Yeah, that's to be expected. Yeah. 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 I Although, guess. I'm a little <laughs> miffed that Panos Panay did it. Gave an interview to I Justine. <laughs> yeah, this is their new. This is their new trying to be with the creators and influencers. Yeah, it's and like, I'll just remind okay. everyone that the strategy failed when they launched new, uh, Zoom and they tried yeah. to get, like, like they gave interviews to like GQ and yeah. all these yeah. like trendy things at the time. It was like, guys, no one cares about Microsoft. The ones who care about you, Microsoft, we I do. Know. What do no, I got to do really, to show you how they, much I love you? They want to be YouTube They want stars. consumers. They want yeah. consumers. And that they're like, we already have the enterprise. We got them. Like, we Yeah, want they the know consumers. they have us. There's nothing yeah. they need to do. <laughs> <Right>. We're the, <laughs> we're the forgotten ones. Mm -hmm. Right. The ones that are going to buy Windows no matter what stupid things they do. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Um, yes. Yes. What so about more, more stuff? More to yeah, Okay, more stuff. <laughs> more stuff. I won't well, try to craft way, a segue. Well, you just tell me what you want to talk in, about. In, in the in the six <laughs> months that have occurred since uh, last Thursday, one yes. of the other things that so Microsoft apologized. They told us they would consider the new stuff, and then on Monday, earlier than I would have thought, they released the first beta to insiders. Right. So now yeah, the world fast. is installing yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, it happened really quick. Yeah. And this is kind of neat because there are features that were not available in the leak, like the new file explorer, the new store, the new quick settings interface, and the new notification slash calendar thing. I, I feel like calendars should be actually I, I feel that notifications should be part of quick settings. Also, I don't like that like uh Windows Key plus A used to bring up the um Action Center and now brings up quick settings. I, and that's where mm -hmm. I used to go to look at notifications. And it's like they're not anyway. But they're jiggering around with that stuff. And and if you've ever seen Chrome OS, uh, this is going to look really familiar to you because it's mm. based on Chrome OS. Um, mm -hmm. It's missing some of the stuff they talked about. Chat with Microsoft Teams is uh, one of the big features, but I think Android app support is the real big one. Uh, that is not available yet. It, you know, it's coming. Um, blah, blah, blah. A lot of this stuff is just, you know, uh, Windows 11, like modern, well, iPad Pros, modern phones, uh, Android phones anyway, is going to support dy dynamic refresh rates, right? And so if you have a 120 yeah. hertz display, it will, it, Windows 10 lets you toggle between 60 and 120. Windows 11 will dynamically change the refresh rate depending on what you're doing. So if you're scrolling uh, through a, you know, big document, you're going to get that really, you know, kind of buttery smooth effect. Uh, but if you're just reading a document uh, without scrolling, it's just going to be 60 hertz. So uh, actually maybe even less than three, whatever, but it's going to be whatever it is, but it's not going to be 120. So that's neat. And the, the, the point of that is if you're on a laptop, um, you don't want it always running at 120 Hertz because it will impact battery life, but you do want it in certain conditions and it will support that. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. And then Mary Jo, I think 
you can probably talk about yeah. this other thing. The Android subsystem. I mentioned this a little last week when we were trying to yeah. figure out how they were going to get the Android apps in the Windows Store last because it was very, Panos just kind of flew by that. But um, later there was a developer briefing and they talked about the fact that they're creating an Android subsystem for Linux that's going to be somewhat like the Windows subsystem for Linux. And um, what it will do is it's going to let you run in a virtual machine or, or at least have compatibility through a virtual machine for AOSP um, so that custom variants of Android that don't rely on Google Play services will be supported. And that's why Amazon Store is going to be like a mini store inside the Windows, or sorry, inside the Microsoft Store the starting this fall. Um, I keep hearing rumors that Microsoft's still talking to Google and they're trying to get Google to be in the store also. But then I saw an article today on Bloomberg saying Microsoft yep. <laughs> and, Amazon and Google have called off their truce. I guess they had like right. some kind of a truce, five-year truce. So I'm guessing that may not happen. <laughs> Nothing um, quite like yeah. the news that Microsoft is, has been colluding with uh, Google for the past five years. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's going to be cool. The Android subsystem for Linux, um, Rich Turner, you know, who was big in WSL, said they're working on some white papers and explainers now how this is going to work for developers. And I don't know, I don't think any, it'll just be like any Android app that exists will run in the Microsoft Store. That's not going to work like that, right? I Right now, as of now, I think you have to be an AOSP app, which limits who's going to be in there, of course. Um, I don't know if how and if that'll change as the subsystem evolves. But yeah, it's that's how they're going to do it. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, I right. I, I you hear Android subsystem for Linux or for Android and you think, well, OK, they're doing their own thing. But then they're <laughs> using other stores and it's like, OK, that's <laughs> interesting. So I assume that that's just the underpinnings that allow. Yeah. The, Will I have see? Amazon's? Android store is another icon? No. It'll be in the Microsoft store, right? I think it's going to be a store in a store. Yeah. That what is too, it? Gonna... Like a mini store inside of the store. Yeah. Because oh. they're, they're letting Amazon, Amazon Amazon's going to be the one. It'll have Amazon branding, you think? <laughs> I do. Yeah. I think it's going to be oh, Amazon. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So maybe it's a, yeah. a partnership deal of some kind. Yeah. 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 Huh. It is a partnership. It's a definite partnership deal. Oh, that's sure. interesting. Yep. Yep. Oh. Amazon, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, Amazon wants to be able to advertise Prime and stuff on their on the store. Right? I guess. <laughs> didn't they already? Yeah, right. They already did a Kindle reader, didn't they, for the new store? Or somebody was. Yeah, saying? somebody's very excited about that. Well, I, think I don't it was think Daniel it's a, Rubino. Somebody on our uh, oh Ed Bot maybe was excited about the the Kindle reader on the Twit. I think that's probably just the Android app, though, isn't it? Yeah, but that's why he was okay. excited because he. I guess okay. he likes the Android app. I don't know. <laughs> Well, the, the the existing Android or Kindle app for Windows is ancient and terrible. So. Yeah, yeah, so that would be yeah. why. Yeah. 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 Yep. But I don't want to read a book in, in a vertical mode. I presume that they they have a yeah. they have they'll have a <sighs> I know. screen I will know. open up. It's Amazon. They can do that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, the Kindle app supports tablets, and it should. Yeah. So it yeah. should. The Kindle app was awesome on Duo. Yeah, it's yeah. really awesome. That was on the Duo. best app on Duo. <laughs> That was like the main thing I liked on the Me duo. too. <laughs> it was like reading a book. I, I, I actually considered keeping the Duo just as my new Kindle reader, but at 1500 bucks, yeah. it was a little overpriced. That's a little pricey. Did it come with like a little like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, record player add-on so you could listen to music too? Yeah. That'd be cool. <laughs> like, like stuff has to be like it was 25 years ago. Yeah. The, the old yeah. days. <laughs> um, somebody's telling me, I don't know if this is uh, a hack or it must be a hack, that I can run Windows 11 on my M1 Mac in uh, VM in parallels. But it would have yes, to be the ARM version of Windows 11. Is there is such a thing? That's, yep, there oh, is. Okay. I guess they mentioned Windows on ARM, didn't they? Uh, yeah. So if you have a Windows <laughs> 10 on ARM PC, you can jo join the Insider program and you will get Windows 11, and it's you know the ARM version. And there's some cool, okay. yeah, there's some cool news around that too because uh, we'll talk about the Office stuff in a second. But we we know that 64-bit comp app compatibility, app emulation, is available now. That was, by the way, interestingly, has been in the Dev Channel since last year. The Dev Channel until this past Monday didn't equate to any version of Windows. Now we know it's Windows 11. Oh. That means that 64-bit x64 
app emulation is only going to be part of Windows 11. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. But Microsoft also announced another technology called ARM64 EC, which is enabling really complex applications like Microsoft Office apps or Adobe uh, apps like Photoshop that have uh, different components and maybe different components written by different you know, companies or they have extensibility capabilities where you can download components, which again, might be written by third parties. Those kind of apps are impossible to get all native on ARM because of the complexity of them. So what ARM64 EC allows developers to do is to take their app and only port some of the components over to ARM64 native, they can just recompile. But it can still run the x64 stuff in emulation. So this has allowed a bunch of things. Uh, but the big one is there's now a native ARM64 version of Microsoft Office available for Windows on ARM. That's incredible. Mm. It is. <laughs> um, I mean, that's that should that's a big thing for performance, especially. Yeah. And then the compatibility part of it is if you have uh, Office add-ons that you use, or maybe there are parts of Office that might have been written by third parties or include third-party code that are just mm. Intel-style x86, x64 code. Mm. Those will run an emulation. And the, the, the idea there is like developers, can, just from a performance perspective, you can say, well, the core part of the app, we're going to recompile for ARM. The, the thing's going to run great. And then maybe over time, we can recompile other components to bring it all native or not. You know, it, it will just depend on the app. Um, and so that, that to me is actually big uh, news. The only issue for Windows 10, well, there's two issues. Uh, Windows 10 and ARM is uh, we still don't have processors that are very performant. I think it's notable that last December was the first time since the original announcement of Windows 10 and ARM that we didn't get a new Snapdragon. I think that's going to come and be, that, I think it's because they're waiting for the Windows 11 wave. Um, and so we'll see what that looks like. The other issue, and this is a this is a uh, this is a bad one, is price. Um, Windows 10 on ARM today, or Windows on ARM computers, are incredibly expensive. So, like, I'm I'm testing in the Leapbook Folio, which is an HP computer. As configured, this computer costs eighteen hundred dollars. Uh, you could spend twenty three hundred dollars on this thing, and it is outperformed by a seven hundred dollar Intel computer. It's a huge problem. Um, I would say in the premium PC space, the average selling price of a laptop slash convertible is probably somewhere between $1,100 and $1,300 for like a nicely configured system. These things are almost twice as expensive. And I don't know how you solve that problem. Um, I can tell you it's not by bringing seven series uh, Qualcomm CPUs to Windows, although they are doing that. Um, so I don't have an answer to that one. But anyway, mm. the, the big, big problems with Windows on ARM are being solved this year and will be solved in Windows 11. Let's hope. I'm getting <laughs> groggy with all this Windows 11 stuff. I really am. Let's talk about Office. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about okay. Office. Okay. It'll be quick. A lot this of will Office will be stuff. super quick. Okay. It'll be so fast because all it is is fancy <laughs> icons and some rounded corners. Oh, Mary Jo. Here we go. Yeah, I know. Visually refreshed Office desktop okay. for Windows 10 and 11. So you get some rounded corners. You get some like nicer looking fluent design if you notice those things across your apps. Um, you can choose new themes like dark mode, colorful, dark gray. There you go. That's it. That's off the new Office. That it's is. in the beta channel. That, that. Wow. There's nothing more, Paul. <laughs> there is nothing more than that. It's like a bunch of rounded corners. <laughs> I, <laughs> there is one big thing. Um, what? If you look at, <laughs> if you look at any of the, come on, what? <laughs> if you look at any of the Office apps, there's something called the Quick Access Toolbar. That's disabled yeah. by default now. Yeah. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> That's not I never use it. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're right. That's most of it. Yeah, so Office Native on ARM, that's huge. Yeah, uh, visual refresh. Uh, if you're if you sign up for the beta channel today, it's not there yet, but today, tomorrow, the next day, it's going to happen. So, yeah. uh, and, yep. and, and it will conform to the Windows if you want it to. It will take on the Windows yeah. 10 theme that you're using, right? So it will look the 11? more natural. Do you mean 11 or 10? I meant 11, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, although, by the way, this new visual refresh, you can get it on Windows 10 too. You don't need Windows 11. It's not Windows 11 specific, but it will be better on Windows 11 because why? Because everything's better on Windows 11. <laughs> but you know, you know what I thought this was going to be? They're supposedly doing a new version of Office, right? Aren't they? Like that's uh, not, uh, yeah. uh, or is it just Teams, the Electron? Teams is Electron, but what about Office? Teams um, is going to drop Electron. I know that. 
Uh, yeah, Teams gonna is going to drop Electron. Yeah. Yep. By the way, I th- I, well, here's what I want to know. Where, where's yeah. the compact uh, ribbon we were promised three years ago? It's only available on the web apps. I want that on desktop. Yeah. Right? It's still the full ribbon. So, yeah, visual refresh. What about the actual functionality of the damn thing? Right. Yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, just quick update on the VM situation. Um, it has, it's activated. And it's now there's activated. a digital... Yep, it activated. Now, again, I just want to be clear. It's not 100% nice. definitive because this could change before the product is released. But as of right now, That's this worked. Great it worked. news. Yep. Cool. If you're wondering why, why my face was lit up there during the <laughs> previous discussion. It lit up by the light, not by his joy. Maybe by his joy. It, 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 it I don't was know. Lit, lit, Could lit be up his by joy. The light, the light mode of setup. <laughs> so you're saying right now, if you're on Windows 7, you can test drive Windows 11 for free. I'm saying if you have a Windows 7 product key, I did yeah. get one to work in Windows. Nice. Uh, clean install Thank you for doing the, uh, doing the labor, the footwork. Yeah, well and so I like, hear... As I said earlier, as I hear they're going to crack down on that when the product. That's what ships. I'm. Yeah, that's 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 my yeah. point. I it may not yeah. be. Don't take this to be fact. It is a fact today. Right. But it may. But not get be on Windows case. 10 if you can. If you're on Windows yeah, 7 before do Windows it. 11 comes, yep. and then you can just get a free upgrade, right? Yeah, Yay. that's right. Because there's that's no right. guarantee that this uh, Insider <laughs> Edition that you've got installed will turn into the full version of Windows 11, or is there? Like, if I get it installed now with a key. So that's a squishy question because uh, one of the that's problems. My specialty. Right, I, I, yeah. The the answer should be yes. You should be able to get to the final version. The problem is going to be if uh, they're allowing people with older CPUs and older TPMs to test Windows 11 now during the insider process. When Windows 11 is finalized, whatever the line they do draw, let's let's say they let in the seventh gen chips. If you have a sixth gen CPU, you're not going to be able to upgrade, um, and that means you're going to have to go back to Windows 10. Which, by the way, you cannot do in the UI. You're, you're going to have to blow the thing away. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Blow it That's away. Little, Let it blow. Complicated, but. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is good. We're making progress. We are. Yeah. yeah. We're getting things ticked off on the list. <sighs> also, I feel like we buried the lead because the most important news of the week. Oh, boy. Is Xbox related. Go. <laughs> of course it is. Course Xbox it is. on ARM. By the way, I tried xCloud on the iPad um, because it's now out of uh, uh, private beta. And I guess it's still beta, but it's public, right? And uh, signed or up for, uh, or maybe it's official. I don't know. Is it official now? Um, it could still be. I signed up for whatever, you know, the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did it on Tuesday, on um, yesterday on Mac Break Weekly. It's, it was a little stuttery in the music yeah. and the um, playback. Not usable, I think. This is uh, so I've not tried it I have uh, high since hopes. this release. I tried it previously, and that's what I experienced. Um, and I'm hoping they figured this out. They did ju- tied to this is a, there's two big things that happened. So Xbox Xbox Cloud Gaming. I keep wanting to say sorry, X-Cloud, Mary Jo. I, I, I apologize. I know. You yeah. had to do it. Don't, no, don't apologize. This is <laughs> look, it's, guys. It's like getting a root canal. It has to happen. So. It's uh, actually the xCloud. It's generally available on Windows PCs and Apple devices via the web. So any device, right? So the web interface works. Um, they also switched over their Xbox cloud gaming infrastructure in their data centers. They used to have custom hardware based on Xbox One X. Now they have custom hardware based on Xbox Series X. And that's going to provide better performance, better graphics, better resolutions over time. You know, they, they're, they're going to rev that up over time. So yeah, I... I I've been a little busy for the past few days, so I haven't had a chance to look at this yet. Um, I, otherwise, I would have been all over this, and I still will be. I'm, I'm, I can't wait to look at this. But, uh, yeah, my experience during the beta process was not as um, latency-free as, say, Amazon yeah. Beta or... Yeah. yeah. Stadia was much better. Yeah. 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 Oh, rats. But still, it's still big news. Um, and then the other stuff, just this is just real quick. Uh, none of this is super important. Um, Microsoft has a design for Xbox program for accessories. They extended that to mobile for Android, I think, last year. They have now extended it to uh, iPhone. So they have Backbone and uh, Razer devices, and there's more coming. So they're just certifying that these things will work with Xbox Cloud Gaming and are designed to work with Xbox Cloud Gaming and whatever device you have. Um, <clears throat> Doom Eternal, which is now Microsoft title, by the way, 
which is the only reason I, well, that's not the only reason. It's one of the reasons I mentioned this, has been updated with, um, uh, for Xbox Series X and S optimized, uh, optimization, right? Normally it's like, I'm not, I can't, I'm not gonna write a story every single time a game is optimized for the new consoles. But this one's interesting because they provide specific visual modes that you can choose from. So on an Xbox Series X, you get performance mode, which requires a 120 Hertz display. It gives you 1800 P at 120 frames per second. Uh, balance mode, 2160 P at 60 frames. And then ray tracing mode, which is 1800 P at 60 frames per second. So that's kind of interesting. And then uh, Xbox Series X S, sorry, gets two modes: performance 1080p at 120, and balanced, which is 1440 at 60. So, um, I have this is a 50 something gigabyte um, upgrade on Xbox Series X. I, I assume we're at the point now where that's not shocking to anybody. If you play any major big games these days, um, the updates are just enormous for whatever reason. But um, I haven't played it yet, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try that soon too. And then just. You know, again, just to be complete, uh, Games with Gold, tomorrow's July 1st. There's a new set of four games we'll be getting next month if you are an Xbox Live Gold or Xbox... What's it called? <laughs> Xbox... Uh, I'm losing my mind. There's too many things. Xbox Game Pass Ultimate uh, subscriber. That's the one I couldn't remember either, so you're yeah. okay. <laughs> there's so many. It's like Xbox... It's crazy. You know. Yeah, this is so much. Xbox used to be simple. Here's an Xbox. This is Xbox. It's one thing. Get it. Here you go. You know, I was really like hopeful because I really wanted to run my uh, Xbox on my iPad. would have been so cool. And, I, you know, it works with the, so, the game. The, I'm going to try controller. different ways. I, 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 you should be able to Xbox controller. wire it to it, I guess. And maybe that would be better. But I'm, I assume you would do it. Bluetooth would be the standard way. Yeah. And that's Bluetooth not where the stuttering not, were com was coming from. Although I would wire it if I, you know, if I could. I just, that's. Yeah. You know, okay. Yeah. I, you're going to have best luck with um, simpler single player games. I, it, it, there's no way any. It, you, well, there are no Call of Duty games. But Call of Duty, well, uh, uh, Doom is probably. Doom's in there. So. Doom will be a good test because Doom Eternal is a game I played on Stadia, and that honestly that worked great. Um, so I'll try I'll try that on Xbox. Uh, nice cloud gaming. Nice, good. There you go, uh, Mary Jo. You're uh, you should be coming out of your uh, coma now. Or is your tooth <laughs> okay? <laughs> Give me time to enter my beer pick. So that's <laughs> oh lord. Uh, yeah. Let's take a little break and come back with uh, the tips of the week. I see Paul's got a giant Slurpee, so uh, they're, we're gonna, they're going to be supercharged, supercharged this week. Uh, and yes, a beer pick. Mary Jo is typing it in as we speak. <laughs> Windows Weekly supported, as always, by AT&T Active Armor. Don't you hate? I just, I just got a new call. Oh, my God. These people are so awful. Saying, my student loan... Is about oh to expire, and they want to reset. And then it says, "If you don't have any student debt, uh, please forgive us <laughs> for calling." It's like, no, don't call me because I don't have any. Uh, yeah. Fortunately, I don't get this on my AT and T phone. You know, I, you, these days the phone is what we live on, right? Whether it's streaming, you know, movies live or catching up with. Family on video calls. I do that every week with the family or watching your favorite podcast like uh, Windows Weekly. The last thing you want is a fraudulent phone call interrupting. Thankfully, AT&T makes customer security a priority, helping block those pesky calls. It's not complicated. AT&T Active Armor. 24-7 proactive network security and fraud call blocking to help stop threats at no extra charge. Because it shouldn't be. Compatible device and service are required. Visit att.com slash active armor for details. Thank you. Thank you, AT&T. Thank you, active armor. Now, it's yeah. time for the back <laughs> of the book. Mr. Paulie Therat. I'm also going to make this one quick, Mary Jo. Tip of the week. Nice. So if you are here, I assume you're interested in Windows 11. And if you're interested in Windows <laughs> if you're 11. not, why are you still yeah. awake? You must have exactly. just had the most horrible two, and a, two hours of your life. Because, um, so I'm going to be covering the hell out of Windows 11, obviously. So I'm writing the book. 
Um, and you know, Mary Jo is pr- maybe on board, but I haven't really gotten that firm yet. But um, yep. in the meantime, <laughs> <laughs> he won't take nope for an now. answer. Will not no. take it. Will not take <laughs> nope for an answer. Uh, I guess no means no. Anyway, um, I'm right, so, but I'm also going to be covering all the new features on the site. So and those will be free uh, feature focus articles, which, by the way, date back to the Super Safe Windows. So this is a thing I was doing over 20 years ago. Um, so I've written one already about snap layouts, but I'm going to be covering uh, snap roofs will be next. All the new stuff in Windows 11. So, you know, just stay tuned for that. Um, one of the controversies we did not mention somehow <laughs> in the show is another one was Microsoft came out with a compatibility tool called PC Health Check. And the idea was to show you if your computer would be able to run Windows 11. How did that work out? uh, Oh, not good. Not good, Leo. Um, (laughs) 75% of people, roughly, that tried it the first day got no's, even though they had perfectly acceptable hardware. They updated it at least twice. They eventually cleaned it up a little bit. The problem is... In many cases, first of all, if TPM was the problem, it usually didn't say TPM. It turns out sometimes it did. Um, It would say something about your processor. The problem is you could go into your BIOS, figure out where TPM is. It's a different language, different location. If you, God help you, figured it out, come back, try it again, and be like, nope, there's another reason it's wrong. So there's a tool called Why Not Win 11. Uh, which you can, I guess, Google. It's all one word, why not win 11? You can, I have a link in the show notes. This tool will show you exactly why you can or cannot run Windows 11. And if you have multiple things that you're failing, for example, typically if you don't have TPM enabled, you might not have secure boot enabled either. Um, so you actually have to enable both of those things. It will tell you the exact compatibility list as Microsoft changes it. They'll update the app and you can find out what you need to do to your current PC to get it to work with Windows 11, or maybe you're going to find out it just won't work at all, depending on on what it is. So definitely check out the tool. It's on GitHub. There you go. Nice. That's it. That was easy. That was very easy. So quick, I'm not even prepared. (laughs) (laughs) How about an app pick of the week? That was the app pick. Oh, Oh, why not Win 11? Sorry. Why not Win 11? Yeah. 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 We've been talking about that a lot. Daniel recommended Why not? It. Why not? <laughs> on uh, Twit. Oh, and by the way, it's going to throw up a lot of, this is an unsafe app, um, warnings. That's uh, why Steve Gibson said don't do it, because it, he's, yeah. Yeah, he said it's, it's safe, but it really does throw up a lot of. Guys, look, they're going to steal your identity, but the point is you need to know <laughs> you if you run Windows 11. It's safe. It's come on, you can device. review the source code if you want. <laughs> Speaking of GitHub, here's a developer pick of the week. From Mary yes. Jo Foley. There is a new Visual Studio Code extension out this week called GitHub Copilot. Yeah. It's a technical preview. So there were a lot of jokes about, oh, here comes Microsoft. They're making it obsolete to be a developer. They've got AI, and their AI is going to write all the code. Not exactly, right? This thing is like a recommendation tool. Um, it's supposed to help you figure out what might be the next line or uh, give you a chunk of code that you could use. It, it's especially good if you're using Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, Ruby, and Go, but it'll work with other languages too. Um, the way this works is Microsoft partnered with OpenAI, and OpenAI has an AI system called uh, Codex, OpenAI Codex. Uh, and it's like a recommendation engine. You take the pu- Microsoft takes the public code, including code that's available on GitHub, runs it through this synthesis. I haven't even had a beer yet. Yes, it, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it synthesizes your code in the GitHub <laughs> Copilot tool. See, I just avoided that completely. There you go. And it oh, makes a recommendation. Go. So, you know, sometimes it'll make good recommendations, sometimes not so good. But... Microsoft and OpenAI say the more you use it, the smarter it gets, the better it gets, the more it codes like you. Um, So if you're somebody who wants to try this out, there's limited spaces in the technical preview, supposedly. So you better get in there now and request to be able to Nothing codes like me. Yeah. Nothing codes like Leo. They they say if if the test goes well, of course, they're going to turn this into a commercial product. It's an interesting idea. Yeah. It is. It is. Wow, GitHub Copilot. Very interesting. Your AI pair programmer. <laughs> yep. Yep. Not exactly like pair programming, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. And as yeah. Uh, as the uh, folks in the Discord have pointed out, it does not work on Emacs. You must use VS Let's just compare it to an au pair. Oh, not an au pair. Mm. An, an au AI pair. pair. <laughs> I pair. An al an, what's an al pair? Al pair. You know, an al I don't understand code for technology. You. Get Al to write <laughs> the code for you. It was this guy Al. I don't know. Al. <laughs> Al will write anything. He'll do it. He doesn't mind. All right. That's your uh, deve deve developer pick of the week. How about an enterprise pick of the week? Okay. My enterprise pick is kind of an explainer this week. There was an announcement today that Microsoft and AT&T did something around 5G. And I saw so many crazy headlines about this. I saw people saying Microsoft just bought AT&T. Nope. They didn't. Nope. Um, <laughs> uh, no, they did not. Um, and I also saw Microsoft is now going to be a 5G provider. Also, no. What happened was Microsoft, AT&T AT is a customer of Microsoft for Azure. AT&T has been dabbling with running different workloads on Azure for several years now. So today what they announced is they're going to move their 5G, AT&T is going to move their 5G core onto Azure. Microsoft's going to buy some of the network cloud platform tech from AT&T and acquire the intellectual property and some of the people. But Microsoft's not buying AT&T outright. Microsoft's not going to be a 5G provider. This is all, if you've ever heard of this thing Microsoft has called Azure for Operators, it's a whole strategy and program for people who are telco providers. Not for you, not for me. Like for companies like, you know, Verizon, AT&T, Vodafone, those people. Um, and they're just basically shoring up their... Um, their strategy and their offerings around that. That's what today's announcement was, if you're wondering. Good. There you go. <laughs> there you go. But I, I hear they're buying AT&T. Is that yeah, true? Yeah, I know. <laughs> One minute after this announcement uh, happened, somebody emailed me and they said, wow, Microsoft just bought at and I'm like, oh, no. Nope. <laughs> now, 14 no. years after iPhone exclusivity, they finally bought AT&T. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. Anyway, that's what's going on. It's pretty cool what Microsoft's doing in this space with Azure and trying to make it a better telco grade cloud. Um, but, what this this announcement basically applies to telco providers and how it's going to be better for them and not for you and me. I yeah. mean, way down the road as their customers, it'll be yeah. better for you and me. Cool. That's it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, but Barry Joe, would you like to pour a long, tall... Why would anyone need to drink after this week? <laughs> oh, <I swear. laughs> Refreshing brew with the best name ever. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I would. And my beer pick is from Grimm, Gravity of Chill. And the reason I made this a beer pick is, I don't know how many people notice this, but when Panos announced Windows 11 last week, Microsoft was trying to instill a, f a feeling of calm so that people didn't panic, uh, right? Um, they wanted uh, it to be like, you know what? If you're a Windows 10 user, it's all going to be good. Uh, this isn't going to be unfamiliar. And even the music they were playing in the background, which we thought was a little, you know, boring mm -hmm. and kind of dull, yeah. they it was all it was all curated to make it feel like a chill environment. So I happen <sighs> to have this beer, Gravity of Chill, and even though it's a double IPA, even though it's nine percent, pretty big beer. Um, it was a very calming beer. It didn't taste too hoppy, didn't taste too hot, like no boozy taste to it. And I felt after I drank it, like Windows 11 was going to be good for me. And that's why I became an insider. I feel like it. we need like a 60s playlist to go along with this, like a Hayden Asbury <laughs> kind of a thing. It's the summer yeah. of love, the summer yeah. of it's like just all yeah. Sounds like mamas and the papas kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. Grim, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The summer of Slevin will be fun. Uh, uh, very nice, you two. Once again, you've done it again. Uh, <laughs> And now I will collapse. And now I am. Yeah, I'm right? exhausted. Oh. That was a draining episode. It kind of was. <laughs> but full of good information. And it's not your fault. It's Microsoft's fault. That's um, right. It's not, it's not me. It's you. Yeah. Yeah. It's not <laughs> me. That's what we're saying. It's you. Uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Joe. We do Windows Weekly 
of a Wednesday morning around 11 a.m. Pacific. Actually, that's Wednesday afternoon for Paul and Mary Joe, 2 p.m. Eastern. And the middle of the night, for those of you in the uh, <laughs> middle of the globe, it would be, let's see, 1800 UTC. Not quite the middle of the night. Evening. If you want to watch, I say the uh, times only because, uh, I mean, that's a podcast. You can listen whatever you want. But if you want to watch us do it live, mm. uh, the easiest way to do that, go to twit.tv slash live. We stream audio and video of us producing the shows. And if you are watching live, uh, you can chat with us live, irc.twit.tv. There is an advantage to doing that, as you can see. Sometimes mm. we take questions from the crowd. Uh, Club Twit members can be in the Discord. We can actually hear you. Uh, if you want to know more about Club Twit, twit.tv slash Club Twit for more information. Uh, and thanks in advance. On-demand versions of the show available on our website, twit.tv. In this case, twit.tv slash WW for Windows Weekly. When you're there, you'll also see a link to a YouTube channel where all the Windows Weekly videos live. Uh, and to a variety of podcast applications, plus an RSS feed if you want to add your own. Do us a favor, though. If you subscribe, which is a great way to get the show, you get it automatically uh, the minute it's available. Please leave us a nice five-star review so others can discover the goodness that is Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley are at, well, Paul Thorat's at Thorat.com. Mary Jo Foley's at allaboutmicrosoft.com. <laughs> they haven't moved in yet. Once they start the book, I think, maybe. But no. I think that's going to require no. cohabitation. They're going to do no the GitHub pair programming version of this book. It's just like Apple, yeah. Mary Jo. You've got to be together. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do yeah. it remote. You know what? I think... I think GitHub Copilot would be your good <laughs> GitHub co -pilot, co pilot is your co author. Exactly. Oh, co pilot is my co author. It writes just like Mary Jo. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's the deal. Here's the deal. If you are a premium member at therot.com, you get extra good stuff. So please support Paul. Mary Jo Foley apparently doesn't need her your support, but if you do see her at a, a, a local uh, in the Manhattan mm -hmm. area, buy her a beer. Make it a good nice. one. None of this. I'll take it. None of this Bud Lime <laughs> crap. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. What else do I have to tell you? Oh, Paul's book, The Field Guide to Windows 10, super to be soon to be superannuated, but yeah. for now still up to date and with it. I have uh, a huge Edge chapter coming. Oh, update, good. Um, oh, which, good. by the way, was supposed to happen Monday and then Tuesday, and it's. I don't know if you know it. It's been busy. Um, but it's, it's all written. I just have to take some shots. It's, it's super close. He's always writing, this Paul Thorat guy. <clears throat> always be writing. Um, leanpub.com. And then Window Field Guide to Windows 11 is on its way as well. Thanks, Paul, Mary, Joe. Great to see you, as always. Stay sure. cool in the sun. At least you're not in uh, British Columbia. Where it is rapidly approaching 50 degrees Celsius. It's I know. like almost Yeah, 50. we don't usually get to say that, but. Uh, yeah, I know. When are you? You're going to be here next week, right? You're not going. I will be week. here next week, uh, but then I'm going to be gone uh, the okay. following week. I'll miss the 14th, so Michael will come in. And you can't do it from Hawaii, huh? That's weird. I probably could, <laughs> but I'm not going to. Uh, I could get Dishy right. McDish face out on my, uh, my uh, balcony. Maybe I could. I'll be gone on the 14th. I will be back for the 21st. Um, hey, have a great 4th, by the way. You're going to yeah, do anything too. fun, Mary Jo? Are there fireworks this year? Yeah, there's fi the regular fireworks are on. So last year they did the weirdest thing. They had like pop-up fireworks all over the city. Yeah. yeah. It was super weird. <laughs> yeah. And then they stitched it If you it need to together. buy fireworks, by the way, just come to Pennsylvania. It's uh, all yeah. we do this time of year. Yep. Yeah. Old uh, Four Finger Louie will sell you a pair. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I know. Uh, Alex oh, Lindsay's like from like Pittsburgh. He talks about s setting up bleachers in the cornfield, and uh, his uncle would uh, uh, <laughs> blow things up to celebrate. Like kid, kids will sell like uh, lemonade now. They have like they just have like uh, fireworks stands, and <laughs> you know it's so like funny. It's, it's so crazy. funny. Yeah, we. I think we stopped that in Petaluma. It was a hard thing to stop because uh, it was for charity, right? Yeah. But I think now, um, after COVID, they didn't do it. And I think now maybe they just thought, oh, good. Maybe nobody maybe will notice. Maybe no one will notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because there, there are no stands. Yeah. So that's actually yeah. good, especially for the pets. The dogs don't like it. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. No. 
No pets like it. <laughs> no pets like it. Well, have a happy Canada Day tomorrow. A happy 4th on uh, Sunday. If you're a Thanks. Twit fan, we will be doing Twit on Saturday because of the holiday. Uh, so join us for a Twit on uh, Saturday, July 3rd at 2.30 p.m. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Mary Jo. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye. Android may be just another operating system, but when you check out All About Android, you'll realize that Android's also a ton of fun. Join me, Jason Howell, and my co-hosts, Florence Ion and Ron Richards, and a whole slew of guests that we invite on the show every week. Every Tuesday, in fact, we talk about the latest Android news, hardware, apps, and we answer a ton of your Android-related questions as well. Don't miss All About Android at twit.tv.